Learning how to write, I was learning the craft. Well, shit, these, a lot of these stories would make really good, um, you know, books. I actually started with poetry as a kid, like the rhyming stuff. So I used to write poems and stuff as a kid. Where I cut my teeth and learned a lot was from reading a bunch of the screenwriting books and then writing a bunch of crappy screenplays. Ever since I can remember writing, I started writing stories. I think writing becomes like a drug. Like once you start, it's really hard to actually stop yourself. Instead of going out with your friends, you're inside chasing the dragon of having breakthroughs with stories and characters and finding those perfect lines. Use the rhythm of the story to, uh, you know, control how the audience sees the story. And if you just read the words on the page, you're not engaging in it. You can tell a, more of a story with a facial expression than you can from a huge word balloon taking up half the camp. Sometimes as a writer, you wonder what the hell you're doing. If you ever think that, am I just making it in a Kantian sense? Am I just making this up? Am I really alive? Am I really, am I really experiencing? Am I just an illusion? The problem with fiction is reality. You do not want your reader to feel let down. I can, I can do this, I think I can do this, but I want to do this. Like when you give somebody a piece of poetry, and it can be someone who hates poetry, and then they read it, and you see that light hit, and you go, oh, I did it. Welcome to another episode of Writing Pros. I am your host, Shay the Red, and I have a super awesome panel with me tonight. So uh, we're just going to go straight in an intro. First up, we got Buddy Lord. How you doing, sir? I am fantastic. Thank you for asking. Happy to hear it. Uh, next to him, we've got Will, who is still muted. <laughs> Hi, uh, Will. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I, so far, I'm good. I'm waiting for you to ruin that. Oh yeah, uh, I'm I'm a I, uh, I'm a regular here. You all know me, but just in case there's anybody new, I am Will. I am the co-writer of Black Flag, which is currently in demand on Indiegogo. Please go over and have a look. Yeah. Um, and I am here to talk with my homies about writing process. <laughs> Homies. <laughs> I see. Did you did you become like Hebrew all of a sudden? I mean, what? <laughs> I'm a homies. <laughs> I, 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 I can't do a Yiddish accent. It's really difficult to do, actually, for me. True. Uh, all right. Down below, we've got Ben Fuselier. How are you doing, sir? What is up? I'm doing pretty good. Sweet, sweet. And uh, the last but not least, we have Luke, a.k.a. Death Metal Hero. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. No, I should have known. It's like a pair of lungs, <laughs> and it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do kind of look like a pair of lungs looking at this little picture. right? I don't even want to tell you what I see. Uh, <laughs> I don't want you to tell no. you what you see either, Will. It, it, it tells a lot about me more than anything. So Yes, it does. Terrifying. I mean, that's I, I kind of the name of the that. game around you, though, is it always just says a lot about you. What I can do to derail <laughs> things and to be a gremlin, as I said. Now we yeah. need like a Tesla coil running through the goggles, and we've worked it. You know? yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect. You do need a Tesla coil in that room. Yeah. That Seriously, that would be actually really badass. Um, although I don't know if the cats would enjoy it as much. Right, well, like, you know what that'd be work. great is when you're you're like telling like uh, like Halloween, right? Everybody tells like Halloween stories. All of a sudden, right. you're like, bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> oh hell, the cat's got into the coil again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we've got. I'm hoping that we're gonna have a couple more join, especially since now we can do up to ten people, uh, which <laughs> is insanity. But we'll we'll go ahead and see who decides to drop by. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're in the chat and you want to you want to hop in as a writer, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know. Hopefully some of the guys that I ping directly because apparently we don't all read our group DMs anymore. <laughs> uh, They're too good for us. In. Right. Like, 
I worked so hard to put this together, and then all y'all fucking ghost well, me, and then at the very end, you I go, just, oh, I, gotta I, say, I thought it was, uh, you were, I don't know, you had that little intro, and I was like, I had to get, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I uh, had to giggle, had to laugh a little bit when I heard Vaughn talking about G.K. Chesterton slaying the dragon. We all have like a Capcom retardation meter, so if you turn on Twitter for about five seconds, it fills up, and then you're you're gone until you right. like fire a, a Hadouken or something and drain it. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, I got a limit saying, break. Omni slash. <laughs> it's every Sunday, and it's at 10 p.m. Eastern every Sunday. And every Sunday, I have to like hit y'all up at fucking eight to be like, "Do you remember that there's a show today?" And everyone goes, "Oh, that's today." I'm like, "It's every fucking Sunday." <laughs> oh, you guys tell me. Anyway. We are here uh, tonight because we are going to be talking about process. So we're talking about the creative process. We're talking about specific writing process, like how we kind of all do the thing. Because uh, the fuck do you have now, Luke? <laughs> it's a goblet. Well, I don't, I don't have a Tesla coil. Oh, I, I thought it was a goblet. Oh, wow. Look at there. <laughs> He's oh got the. Uh... I remember when those came out in the early '90s. Everybody had one. The big balls that you know attracted. Yeah. Not ball, but, you know balls. Yes, but this has a skull on it. It's cooler. I thought it, it would have been much cooler if it was a goblet or something. I've got plenty of skull goblets. This. this okay, I don't want to like. I, if you, anyway. never mind. I'm, I'm not gonna say. Sorry. <laughs> it goes back to your Scythian roots. You got to drink out of skulls. Six minutes and we haven't even touched on the topic. <laughs> Oh, oh, do your job as a hostess, damn it. I'm trying to. You know what, Well, Don't make me put you in time out. Don't make me dominate you. Okay. What? All right. You should get like an animated so, dunce cap uh, or something. we're going to have a conversation <laughs> <laughs> about the creative process. And uh, I wanted... Are you ready to behave? Uh-oh. Okay, suddenly the stream got interesting again. <laughs> no, he's not ready to behave. So. Oh wow. I can't. I fucking can't. Every every Sunday. <laughs> anyway. I'm like a hemorrhoid. <laughs> you really are. You just keep coming Remember back. you said that not I'm, I'm I, you know, I'm I'm benign and smooth for a little while and then you eat something you don't like and it stabs you. Oh my gosh. Uh sounds like I, an I, ulcer. That's the worst mental image I have had <laughs> this week. Thank you so much. I'm Why are you talking about gastrointestinal problems? <laughs> this is kind of Cuz I'm a gremlin. You. Thank you, Samir. You guys are hilarious and awesome. No, Shay, please. <laughs> so, to start, do you guys have a specific process or a specific way that you go about trying to create a world initially? Does anybody have, like... My lord? Go, you go first. <laughs> My lord. <laughs> Beast lord. No, um... Jesus, do I have a, a... I don't have a process. I just... I throw things down in a bullet point until I like it. And then once I like it, I'll write it. And once I write it, I give it some bones is what I call it. And then I start to create connective tissue. And then I just write it and 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 write it until I like it. And so in the process of run into yeah, I mean, in the process of writing it, like I, I'll, I'll be like, you know what? This could use a reason to do this. <laughs> and then I'll develop <laughs> the reason. And then I'll say, do you know what this reason could use? Some sort of lore. Okay, let's develop that. <laughs> It's so a your bit like is one of necessity. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it is a bit like uh, Fraga went on uh, Ricardo's show one time, and he talked about um, how he was in uh, some company where they like got the toys, and then they had to develop the story from the toys. And I thought, you know, that kind of reverse engineering is cool, right? That's almost like writing a mystery story because you're going backwards. You already have it. You're going backwards. You know, you're, we're reverse engineering whatever's there. And I'm like, well, that's kind of cool because you could look at it and be like, why does he have this sword? Why does the sword look like that? Why do his claws look like that? Why does a belt look like that? You know, is there a story to this pouch? Is this pouch like his grandfather's pouch? Whatever, you know. And then, and, I mean, that's kind of how I write. I just the, sort of throw it all together. Hand and, me you know. down through generational pouch that just goes with the family. That's right. Why is this pouch here? This pouch contains a bullet. What's the bullet? I don't know. He wants to kill himself. Why does he want to kill himself? I'm not sure yet. I'll figure that out later. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he's got a reason. What about you, Ben? Do you got any uh, specific kind of process that you go through? Um, it's kind of hard to say because for the most part, it's like my ideas come from just other works of art that kind of like, you know, I'll look at something that somebody did and it's like I like a certain idea they were playing with that they didn't really explore. 
or they didn't really uh, expand on. And that's kind of, you know, I start to kind of build outward from that, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, Luke, you got anything? Um, I get scenes. I'll get a scene in my head, and I will play that scene out until that scene stopped making sense. Yeah, and me too. <laughs> then uh, Welcome, I'll leave Mark. that. What up, Mark? What's Hello. up? I was going to uh, bed, but then I listened to like two minutes and I was like, fine. I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I, I bring all the boys to the yard. It, it, it is definitely your milkshake, Will. I was exactly. about to say, yeah, man, let's see the milkshake. <laughs> you really want me to? Please don't. No. Go for it. We're going to get struck Go down. for it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Buddy, I will put you backstage too. Stop encouraging Hello. bad behavior. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> back to Luke. So, what were you saying? Um, like I said, I will. I'll get scenes in my head, and then I'll just. I will write down that scene, and I will have several different scenes, and then I will try to think what will connect these scenes together. What chronological order do they go in? Does this scene even make sense? You know, uh, is it part of the same world? Sometimes the scene that pops into my head is not part of the same story. So I will put that away and save it for later, and then I will write something else that goes along with, uh, you know, the majority of the scenes that I've already got. Generally speaking, I end up with a bunch of scenes that work for the story that I'm going, and then I will write the connected tissue the uh, that creates it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like uh, I, was it was it Buddy that said uh, he'll try to figure out the the motivations and stuff like that. I do that as well. You know? Nice. But I have I have scenes and characters, and I, I go from there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Before I get to Will, how are you, Mark? I'm good, thank you. How are you? It's real late here. It's it like is. Half three in the morning. I'm so I'm so shocked that you came on, but I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm gonna have to stay awake now till I... my job starts at Mega Leave Mega Evil Corporation in the morning. Oh, <laughs> well, thank I have you to for work coming in the morning, on. Too. I'm happy that you're here. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna take him down with a raspberry pie and the air conditioner. Mm. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just gonna roll past it. Did that work? Um sorry. So what we're what we're talking about is kind of the creative process and uh and writing processes. So do you have since uh you're the most likely to possibly dip, although Will is a very old man and could dip at any moment because it is so Why are you very over me. What am I an asshole here? Like what's wrong with you? Yes. <laughs> do, I'm sorry, did you not know you were an asshole? Yes, you were an asshole. <laughs> Aren't you he a was about it like eight, asshole? so well, yeah, but you know, I don't want anyone else saying it. <laughs> but I don't want anybody to call me out on it. Anyway, uh, do you have a specific uh, process that you go through when you're trying to create or uh, world build? Like, uh, so for writing a story, I always say that I can write a story in half an hour if you can give me like uh, the the lesson or like the moral at the end in it. Then uh, all I need is that, like, and a character, and then I can just reverse engineer it. Like, I see the whole thing in one go, and it, like, uh, with all the beats and shit. Like, uh, so I think that's the key. That's the secret to finding motivation. Like, people try and make a character and be like, what motivates them, and then how does this affect them? Do it the other way, and it start at, like, uh, where you want it to end, mm -hmm. and then go back to the beginning. That's uh, pretty much what I do. Like, I mean, you know, you start with the, like I said, you reverse engineer it and you just kind of have an idea of what you want to say. And then you go, you know, you create your characters and everything from there. <laughs> yeah, I do say I like her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, you're up. What's your, what's your creative process? Well, before I begin, I want to say, Mark, I am strangely aroused by your smooth British voice and thank you for coming on the show. You are I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to get me through this because it was, I was not looking forward to it. So see, Oh, and Will had to go. Bye, Will. <laughs> <laughs> not looking see, forward to it. Un unhinged. Agree with me. You need like an animation for that. For yeah, get an overlay in it. Like oh, yeah, for me, yeah, getting rid of Will. yeah, like it, it goes, <laughs> And he's gone, right. you know. Because <laughs> it happens It'll... so much. Actually, you do it once per stream. 
it seems I, like. I, I, I do. Once we've done it we've four done it times, times this stream. Yeah. So you should <laughs> make something make it. for it's like, Will's gone. Ding, the Will button. The Will button. <laughs> Like, Where there's a will, it's, there's it's a the timeout button. It can be exactly. applied to anybody. Timeout button. What's funny is William is my middle name, so you know. <laughs> oh, good. We'll just have William is my middle name. Oh, um, gosh. Um, so, what can I add? Is that, uh, as I was saying to Frega in an email earlier, I'm too retarded to just kind of pull ideas ex nihilo. Uh, I have to have some sort of internal reference for everything. So, the way I do it is when I'm not doing somebody else's stuff like Frega's and reverse engineering, um, I come, I'm trained as an academic. So I'm always coming up with a thesis, you know, what's the, what's the thesis, you know, what do I want to talk about? What's interesting me in, what are you proving? Right. Well, we're not just proving, but what in history am I, my reading, what, what concept am I playing around with in my head? Mm -hmm. And then I go, okay, for example, you know, for a project we're going to be doing next year called Coliseum, I want to tell a story about revolution and like it's a link to like sexual habitat, you know, um, appetite and I say, okay, I've got that thesis. So the world is going to generate itself out of that thesis. And as it generates itself out of that thesis, I've got my supporting paragraphs that are going to interlink together to push the characters around the story. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's not a matter of going, okay, what would he do in this situation? It's the, it's, you know, it's the boundaries created by the thesis that's bouncing them around. So mm -hmm. that's how I do it. I, I, I have to know everything that's going on prior to I ever coming up with a character in the story. Otherwise, I'm going to be completely lost. So and basically, you understand the structure of it so well, you build the story around it. Right. It's kind of what they said about Tolkien, that he had to know what he was talking about to, to put these people mm -hmm. on a journey, right? Like, it's not so, enough that they went on a journey. It's like, where does it go? What is it called? What's the mountain called? Which pass are they going over? Yep. What is that pass? Where does it go? What people live there? What's then, the cosmology, the lore, the language? Right. Now you have something to talk about, you know, and otherwise you're just taking the real world, superimposing it, and just putting them as rats through a maze. And so, I, that's, uh, that's how I work anyways. So, so orcs aren't black people, right? I mean, of course they're black people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and God. struck. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Goddamn. You have one job, which is to fucking behave. Hello, Frankie. How are you? Up, How are you doing today? I'm on. Oh, wow. you're on. Hi, bud. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm like, what's going on? What to, um, to is that your butt, dude? Turn around. No. <laughs> oh. I what I was saying about Frega, though. His was cool because what I had there was um, what Mark said about reverse engineering. I, I could take, go through, comb through all of Gear Twenty Three and Black Flag find every single reference to anything he's ever made and say, okay, what does that mean? And how does that connect together? Because Dan never did that work that I know of. Yeah. So that's where mm -hmm. I'm having the true creative freedom in this project because he knows the story he wants to tell. What right. my contribution is, is the undergirding of all of it. How to connect it, how to make it something, you know, more. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So how are you doing today, Frankie? Sorry, I'm late. My dog puked before and it was a mess. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no. That, so, someone gave him cheese. I don't know who the hell did it, but I'm gonna blame yeah. you. But okay. is that a stew chef's hat? Yeah. What? <laughs> I love how Will right. answered for the guy. <laughs> I was like, I was wondering the same thing. I was looking like, I was looking like is it? Why? I, 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 I was wondering. Is he gonna get Frankie? Were you making a the Sunday gravy? Hat? It's not a chef hat. It's a Peaky Blinders hat, mate. Oh, oh it's a Peaky Blinders hat. Oh, no. That's uh, the city that I'm from knows where that happens. Really? <laughs> <Sure enough laughs> yeah. I think That's it's awesome. multivalent, you know? It's like a like a Cretian staircase. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, uh, Frankie, what we're talking about today is the creative process. And what everyone was kind of going over is, do you have a specific process when you're trying to create something new uh, that you go through? No, nah, it's different every time. Like, I might come up with a uh, quote or a saying or something, like or even a line, like dialogue. I'll write it down, and then sometimes I'll work around that. Or I can get inspired by something I saw, a genre, something. And I don't know. It's different every time for me. Okay. Interesting. That keeps the, the process fresh. Keeps it inter yes. interesting. I'm, I'm whacked anyway. I'm nuts. So whatever the hell strikes me, strikes me. <laughs> if I sit down with a blank piece of paper and pencil, I'll, I'll just sit there and go nuts. 
but nothing will happen. It just won't work that way. Not for me, anyway. I can't work with pencil and paper. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. I, I got to, like, I have to have, I don't know, I got my notepad open, just a bunch of bullet points. I just knock it down usually and just have, like, a, a bunch of different ideas. Well, isn't your notepad made out of, like, pen and paper? No. On the computer. On the computer. No, yeah. All right, sweet. Yeah, I prefer the clunking sound of uh, clicking away, like at the keyboard. Also, mm. if I'm confident, I'll use a pen. <laughs> <laughs> I even have the mechanical keyboard, so it's a little bit more clinky. You know, that's nice. what I got. That's why everybody bitches every time I type on stream. They're like, "Gosh, Shay, shut up!" I'm like, "I, it's a mechanical keyboard." I don't know I'll just write it in. A, I'll write it in blood, like Saddam did with his Quran. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that'll work. Well, I'm not really well, sure why you need that much dedication, seriously. but sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Hold on, let me just double check in. Okay, we're still uh, currently we're still alive. Yeah. But he did asshole. do that. I'm, it's a fact. Ay, ay, ay. I noticed something that. Try and get a strike. Like, okay, fine. <laughs> Thank oh, you. you can get struck for that? Yeah. You can get struck for a lot of things if hey, people say it's If speech. it's a fact, it's a fact. I don't see the problem. It does, it, Frank, there are a lot of facts history now. that YouTube wonder, does not like. <laughs> I wonder which special forces guy got that Quran. Anyway. In the weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw a, a, a comment from uh, our buddy Jason there in the in the chat on Hinge Entertainment. He says, I don't, uh, I draw pretty pictures. I don't write. Uh, honestly, sometimes if uh, a scene takes too much, too many words to write out, I will literally just draw a scene. Like I'll start storyboarding it out just so I know exactly what's going on, and then I'll go back and re-refine it with, uh, you know, with words. Anybody else do that, or is it just me being an artist? Uh, I normally can't draw what yeah, I me want it to look like. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing about it; it doesn't really have to look like anything. Just you know, just so you have a visual representation of what's going on. Yeah, but if I no, attempt to draw to something, it, it's likely to be some sort of weird surreal impressionism that's going to completely conflate yeah. the subject, and I won't know what the heck I'm doing by the end of it. For me, it's like yeah. I, I, I've drawn out characters, but they were always kind of cute little cartoony things that I would I would never want to be in the final product. <laughs> like, I want it like this, but but like looks real. Like not what this stick figure is. No. See, I I can draw, but only when I'm actually like, if I'm talking about the specific character that I want for a book or a specific scene, it can only happen live when I'm talking to the person who's actually going to draw it, and make it look good. Because afterwards, I'm going to be like, so here's this, and then over here there's this movement, and then this over here, and it's going to like by the end of it, it's just going to be a bunch of scribbles on a paper. And I'll look at it like a week later, and they'll be like, hey, so what was that? And be like, I have no idea. Uh, right. like, you have this little like round thing that you put and be like, nope, I don't, I don't, I don't know what that was. Uh, were you not recording? Do you not remember exactly <laughs> everything I said? Cause I don't, <laughs> I knew what, it, what I wanted then. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it depends on, uh, I think, um, it depends on what you're doing at the time. So for example, writing is such a highly intellectual, you know, exercise <laughs> and drawing and painting is a whole different part of your brain that something yeah. else clicks on. An, an example of that, for example, um, you guys know who Terrence Malick is the director. They like the no. Thin Red Line, uh, oh, New okay. World, okay. Badlands. You know, genius. Um, okay. He he's known for writing these thick phone book like scripts. Like the Thin Red Line was a thick script with a lot of dialogue. But you see that movie, there's no dialogue in it. He cut it all out. And he made a purely visual film. Like he edited a movie that was just beautiful to look at because he was more in love with the visuals when he sat down to edit his movie. He didn't care about the writing anymore. Was he was in love with the writing when he was writing it. Thin Red Line, was that the one right. the military movie where the guy keeps like he's like about to shoot somebody and goes back to thinking about having sex with his girlfriend? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I've ever seen that one. So With Jim Caviezel? Yeah. Uh, and Sean Penn? I, believe so. I don't say know everybody movie. in Hollywood at the time was in it. I just remember it, it would it, the, the imagery was just so weird because there'd be like slinking across, you know, they're like 
you know, uh, being stealthy, you know, on their bellies, crawling across the grass, about to kill somebody. And then like a snake, you know, begins to slither past them. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, my girlfriend. And I'm like, why would you right. be thinking about that at a time like that? But then it goes through this whole like visual montage of like these memories yes. of his girlfriend, right? Yeah, but like it explodes. Time, yeah. It's linear, right? Yeah. He's well, writing he's these, coming under fire. Right. He's writing all these long dialogue scenes, but when he's editing it, he cut out all of his own dialogue. Uh, J- Jason wants to know if you think the people who draw are dumb. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, whenever I have to speak to an artist wow. about making it art, it make, <laughs> makes me feel dumb. Like Bear in mind, too. he works with Dan Fragger, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Will is pretentious. What were you saying, Kami Mark? I, I, we just kind of talked all over you, man. What were you saying? I was saying that when I'm talking to an artist about like mm-hmm. what I want, the art that I want them to do, like, uh, it makes me feel real dumb because, like, I don't know the words. Like, I don't know how to explain it to them. Right. Any. Like, uh, <laughs> if I could, if I knew how to explain the picture that I exactly have in my mind to them, I could just write a fucking novel instead on it. Like, because uh, I'd be able to <laughs> write it properly. Like, yeah, there's like the artist speaks a different language. I get what you're saying. Oh yes, he does. Well, and, and oh that's yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Like he was just saying, he's like, if I if I could explain it to him, I could just write a damn novel. I wouldn't need it to be a <laughs> graphic novel or a comic. Yeah, but comics are more fun. They can be, and and it. I think it really depends on the medium. I think that there's a lot of stuff that really lends itself to visual storytelling, and then there's a lot of things that, um, without having specific kind of language behind it, like. I could do a scene where I'm showing somebody getting killed or I can do a scene where I'm describing what that person is feeling and what's going through their minds as they're going through that, that bit of being killed. And while it in a, in a comic, it's going to be one or two panels, even if you ended up making it an entire page and you had, you know, the thought bubble uh, implied that was showing various aspects of their life or whatever, it's, it is probably not going to be quite as impactful as some of the language you could use. To describe what that person might be going through and so it i think it depends on what your what your goal is are you trying to get somebody through a very big story in a more succinct manner are you trying to convey like when i do uh, my project fade i i'm using color as a key aspect of storytelling and so without the color it, it's just more words like People, people have the words that already exist to kind of tell you this is what it's like and, and this is what, you know, depression feels like. But the way that I'm going to have an artist represent it is very, very contingent on the use of color. Mm-hmm. And so that so, has to be told in a, in a visual medium. It can't be told in a novel because a novel is just another fucking pamphlet on depression. That's not, <laughs> that's not helpful. Yeah. Need that visual representation, your... yeah. Well, I mean, that depends. There's writing, and I, I mean, Will's probably he was getting getting he was talking about this earlier, and there there's writing and there's storytelling, right? You know, and you writing you can do that. There is, are different ways, different pentameter, like especially if you've written a lot of poetry and that kind of thing, a lot of different kinds of poetry, right. and and you begin to learn like to control rhythm, to control you know immediacy, to control those kind of things, then you can infer some of that within storytelling but it is going to be much more impactful with color because we are visually oriented you know well and you you've also got to pay attention to how are you like what audience are you trying to reach you know what i mean because like Mm -hmm. the audience that is going to benefit and be able to analyze and break down and really kind of digest and internalize poetry is not necessarily the same audience that is going out and buying a whole bunch of graphic novels like some are but not all of them are, are overlapping. And so if I'm trying to reach a larger majority of people who maybe they like to think, but they don't like to feel like they're thinking. They like <laughs> to feel like they're being shown something and they're being mm-hmm. guided through something as opposed to reading something and then doing what Will does, which is ruminate on what I just read for the next you know, four hours about all of the little nuances and all of the little, like that's something that Will loves to do. And that's something that he's done extensively with most of the books behind him. Um, but there's there's other people who would rather have somebody guide them directly through, this is what it's supposed to feel like. This is what you're supposed to be getting from it and being able to 
see it visually to reinforce what the words and the mood are already kind of setting. That, so you got to pay attention to your, your audience. That's definitely uh, true with me. Um, like, I think I tried writing a novel a while back and it was just wreaking havoc on my, my uh, obsessive OCD stuff because essentially like I just, it's one of those things where it's like, I'd rather just show you what I'm talking <laughs> about than, than make paragraphs of description. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd say from, on my own end from what's going on right now, uh, I'm very lucky, I think. I'm very blessed in the situation I'm in where I don't have to really think visually at the moment right. because I've got Dan Frega. And Dan of Frega, course. you know, for all, in all seriousness, is probably one of the best sequencers out there. And Dan mm -hmm. is, is both the boss and the artist. So I can't tell him what to do. So I'm simply, he's going to say, I want to draw this. And I'm going, okay, what do I put there? And he's going to put his panels where he wants to put them. And he's going to draw a big splash page. And there's going to be <laughs> words there. And I'm not going to cover his beautiful detail up with a big old wall of text. So what's kind of fun about that is the same thing you do in, in for example, we were talking about earlier, college, is you're, you're adapting yourself to whatever the circumstances dictate, right? Mm -hmm. So. If it's got if if it's a clean and and um, and fast paced double pager, you know what? I'm gonna put sparse dialogue on there, even though my instinct is to kind of overwrite. You know, mm. so that that's the kind of fun part is adapting myself to him. You know, to me anyway. Maybe some people. Yeah, might no, no, I can see that. That would uh, that would add a unique challenge uh, changing your writing style to adapt to the way your artist works. Absolutely. I do this. I, I pretty much like, I mean, I'm the boss in my project, but I do that because I'll write a script. I'll give it to Joe. Joe's got a better, what I call head camera than I do. Mm. So he sees the scene better than I do. That's a good when way he, to put it. Cause Dan is a head camera. Exactly. And when he yeah. gives it back to me and I look at it, I'm like, okay, the words I had don't fit. So let me, mm -hmm. m let me write what fits, but we'll say the same thing, you know, or, yeah. or convey the same feeling. Let me bust and, out the thesaurus and find another way to say this to you. And then that's kind of the exciting part because if you've got an artist like Frega or like a Rob Willis and you write something, you want to see what their camera is going to do with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you want to give them the room to do that. Unlike Alan Moore who write, who does like very detailed thumbnails and says, do this. Yes. You know, Gaiman, Gaiman did the same thing for Sandman. He had very, very extremely, uh, you know, um, uh, detailed <laughs> scripts where it was i want a square box this long over here with you know hugen and munin doing that i'm like okay right. <laughs> so you know my my directions to uh to joe are usually like a couple sentences this kind of panel like a wide panel this panel that panel and this and he's like okay and he goes and then he brings me back something i'm like all right how can i make this work and what's funny is it's a lot like the old uh marvel way they call it the marvel way because stan lee he had so many things he didn't want to bother with it so they would create all the the pictures and everything for him and then he would put the words in <laughs> yeah that's basically how i write like the last two the first book that i did you know the best career book like uh obviously uh it's a it's a photo novella in it like uh, so i had to start with the photos and then create a story on top of it like mm -hmm. uh, an alternate uh, history story where things go differently so it's limited by the photos that are available to choose from like to mm. stitch together and then uh, on this not daredevil project like it uses uh, original golden age art and it like some using like uh, public domain stories that are like already drawn by like legends or whatever and I have to retell the story inside like the original framework of the story it's a, a challenge mm. well yeah using uh images that are already there to tell a story that's that's a whole different uh, writing challenge isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. well and that that's actually one of the things that um that probably got me to back your book mark was the fact that i mean aside from the make korea best again hat which just killed me <laughs> and i have to i have to have and put on my head um but the fact that your entire comic is actually a bunch of historical pictures and you're like oh i made a narrative 
Then it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, and good hell. <laughs> a, where, like, uh, Korea, awesome. win, Korea win the war at the end, and it looks so you can imagine how difficult that was to Spoilers, like, make man. happen. Oh. It's like the first <laughs> sentence in the campaign, everyone knows <laughs> that's going to happen. I know. Oh my gosh. But uh, even, well, yeah, if people read my book and was like, yeah, it was okay, it was a bit funny, like, uh, you're still going to think, well, it was quite a technical achievement. <laughs> like, they was able to <laughs> stitch it together and, like, the jokes were shit or whatever. Like, uh, well, that's that's something that I think is really interesting, though, is because you took an entirely different approach to what most of us end up doing for writing, which is you just you just laid out a shit ton of pictures and you're like, if I put them in this order, can I make a story? Okay, I'm going to move this one over. Now, does that make the story better? <laughs> okay, I'm okay so this was this because you're cheap and didn't want to hire an artist or what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and when I was making this, that's when I had the idea to do it with uh, Golden Age art in it. Like, and I, I did that like a year ago, and uh, like gave away nine hundred of them for free. People went mental for it, so <laughs> doing that. So. So you could make a sh you could just do a sh uh, have a kind of a shtick, you know, have do like a, take say like Comicsgate projects and completely rewrite them. Yeah, yeah, I thought about doing that, like uh, doing a thing called not Comicsgate, like uh, <laughs> and then just do not versions of everyone's characters. It's called not Daredevil because the <laughs> real the name Daredevil's trademarked, and it, even though the character from the Golden Age is in the public domain, like Marvel mm -hmm. and the trademark on the name. Yeah, and, uh, Gail trade, Simone wrote that character not too long ago. Yeah, as the Death Defined Devil last year. The same. So uh, I released my Not Dead Devil issue one the month before she released the Death Defined Devil <laughs> and it for Dynamite. <laughs> and then I launched my second issue like on the day that she launched hers in it. And uh, there's like a letter inside of issue two, like addressed to her, like saying, um, looking forward to defeating you like over the course of the year and shit. <laughs> but uh, she sold like 8,000 copies of Death to Find Devil 1 and I gave away 900 couldn't even give away like 8,000 so she, she tranced me but now Gosh. on Indiegogo coming soon you can all help me get the 8,000 copies that's how, that's, that, that should be your rallying cry <laughs> beat Gail Simone bye bye mm-hmm but well, yeah, what well, you need is for her to denounce anything that you do, and that's uh, that's she, almost as good as like an EBS endorsement. She oh yeah, me over the whole thing like a year ago. Uh, oh, I can't remember what I was going to say now. Oh yeah, so one of the challenges that I, because like uh, all of my books are funny, and it like uh, so each like caption scene that I write has to like do character development, like advance the plot forward. And make a self-referential like meta joke at itself, and it, like, uh, and it's quite a challenge, especially on the golden age ones, because I can't adjust the size of the text boxes. Like, I could make them larger, but I couldn't really make them smaller, you know, because I'd have to draw more background and shit. Uh, so you have to fill it in the same amount of space. So if they took twelve lines to say something. You've got to take 12 lines to say your thing in it. Or if they've replied with one word, you need a one word answer like that fits in that box. It's a, <laughs> it's a real challenge. But uh, those restrictions like make me better, I think. Like if I uh, had a blank piece of paper and could do whatever, then I'd just, I'd still be writing that first thing like now. Right. Uh, Soul Island wants to know how many people got the burn the book perk. Uh, eight, I think, maybe nine. <laughs> like, uh, I just love that that was one. What does that mean? You get nothing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I, I'll burn. I'm doing a uh, Korean barbecue stream, and it where I'm just gonna barbecue them, like for all the people that paid for me to do that. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, so like, know, do any of you guys use audiobooks to give you inspiration for your process? Oh no. I can't. I can't. Doesn't work. <laughs> I, I love audiobooks. I can't. I can't. I, I can't follow them. I have to read. 
Right. See, and but, I'm I'm the other way. When I read, I get for whatever reason, if I'm sitting down and reading a, a really long book, I usually get very, very tired. Like very quick. So I'll I'll get maybe 10, 15 pages in and then I'm like, oh, I need to go to bed. And it, it could be like I could have just got up and started reading and I'm like, I gotta go to sleep. Like, and 15 <laughs> pages. That's like, you know, 14 more than the average American. <laughs> that, that's not that's just sad. I'm Unfortunately, it seems like most Americans stop reading after they leave high school. Um, yes. Is... They don't read in high school. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're forced to did. actually touch a book in high school. So they don't read in college either. I don't think I did that either. I don't think that I ever had to touch the book. I think I, I think that I had a friend flip it over and I read the back of it and I went, I'm pretty sure I can guess how this book goes and what tropes it has in it because it's a classic, which means it's got, it. it's one of the birthplaces of all of the 5,000 fucking tropes that are in every movie that exists. I, so I, I, did, like, I did that during college. <laughs> I did that in high school and college. I was actually I had people idiot, ask actually me to read tutor. all everything did raves I was in college. <laughs> I was a moron. <laughs> I, actually, I actually read every bit of a sign reading. Mm-mm. Oh. Well, it also helped. I would listen that, to audiobooks um, if I could. Yeah, but you studied, what that, is it, Latin or something? <laughs> Roman literature? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, but even like the, because I was always paranoid about not knowing an answer on a test, so I would read every scrap that they gave us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, you know, I was paranoid. So, but apparently, you know, you don't, you're not supposed to read anything because. They never expected much of anyone. No. So I was an idiot. They expected I mean, you to I, regurgitate whatever they talked about in class. Precisely. Yeah. I, I literally uh, wrote book reports for three years on The Great Gatsby. And I never, <laughs> I remember. I never read it. I what, what, literally never read it. I, I watched the movie once. I bullshitted my way through. And then uh, when people were... I, I was asked to tutor uh, some of the kids that were struggling with some of the nuance of writing uh, of the writing within it. And so I sat down with them and I was like, so what happened in the reading last night? They go, you didn't read it. And I went, no, and they go, well, then how the hell are you going to tutor us? And I go, let me teach you about the great art of bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> I think now like kids could just be like, like, did you read the great Gatsby? And somebody would be like, no, cause it's racist. And she'd be like, a. Hey. Hey, yeah, no, you're dead, I dead ass. Dead I'm ass sure. period. <laughs> Instantly. That I, is the I most just, racist piece of anything. It's just one of my so. prized emails was from a teacher telling me that I was acting too much like a man. Yeah. What? I you remember know. this story. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Yeah, That's because I made uh, I made this you know middle-aged woman, this Karen chick, uh, rage quit. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, he he wrote me an email because she, you know, she wrote an email to the class saying how, of course, she was tired and she left because she was tired and couldn't answer me. You know, didn't wasn't with it that day. You know that old trope, right? The Jordan Peterson right. cider of doom. And um, the teacher wrote me a long letter saying, you know, we were just talking about gender roles and you go and do that. You know, basically saying you're being such a man. It was. It, I still have it somewhere in here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was being problematic to the middle-aged Karen. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, when people can't handle it, it's okay. Uh, when I disagree, I'm brainwashed by the patriarchy. So, <laughs> yep, <laughs> there's no winning. Like you, you and my just, mother you either agree or you're no. you're wrong. That's the only your only two options. My mother is pa- is, uh, is is totally in the thrall of the patriarchy because she hates women. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of. I was like, you know. Um, as a woman, uh, feminists have have made me uh, rather misogynistic. Yep. Like I'm more of a men's rights activist than I am. So <laughs> Ion is correct. I, I I threw out my toxic mas- masculinity everywhere I went. Yeah, so so, so Ion said your toxic masculinity was showing. He's just <laughs> tossing that stuff out you. like confetti, you know, just walking down the road. <laughs> Yeah, she, she, you could tell that, that that Karen, she had some kind of weird abuse in her life because she apologized to punctuate all of her sentences. She would, she would start talking and then say, I'm sorry. And I'm like, okay, you've got some trauma. I'm not your enemy. You know, I'm just a man. I know I remind you of your father. It's okay. It could be that, yeah. but it could also uh, be that literally these kind of people are taught to be completely subservient. Yeah, it was weird. You know, I don't, I, I don't see and I don't understand this. I like as as a female representation on this panel. What the fuck? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't I, don't think think I don't think I could get Shay to rage quit. She would just start laughing. 
exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what. That's mm-hmm. all I do. So the the amount of times that I, I'm supposed to, and we always do this. We always get off on this topic. But if you're going to bring up feminism, I'm going to have to say something because I can't not. Please. Um, <laughs> I can't. I, like I literally can't. I've tried so many times where I'm like, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna take the bait. And then someone will say something I'm like, oh, I gotta say it. No, I can't not. Yeah. I can't, right. So I must. Um, <laughs> the the <laughs> thing that I've always found hilarious. So if you look if you look at my channel. Right, and you look at like this panel right now. I am I am on a show with six men. Mm-hmm. I have never had any of you seriously. Now I've had Will jokingly, and I know it's joking because I'll, I'll kick his I'm ass. A boy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm five men and a boy. boy. I'm a complete <laughs> gentleman. I'm not not like Elliot Rogers. I haven't decided Nails. if Frankie should like you know take me in a cab or cook me a pastry yet. It depends on which way his hat. Flies. I wanted to make me a pizza and deliver it in a cab with a no, real no, big no. accent. No, no, no. You know what? That's, that's, racist. that's an Italian stereotype. Yes, that's an Italian stereotype. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm very racist. It. My Look, bad. Fuck that. Yeah. I'm really angry. He hasn't shown us his eye rock yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, when when you start talking about what that stands for, right? No. I R O C. You know what that stands for? Give it to me, Frankie. Hold on. Italian retards on cars. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've been waiting for it. Yeah. Like you know, I know he polishes it to a shine every Sunday after the gravy's made. So I don't like Camaros. <laughs> gravy? Yeah, the you're not talking gravy. about red sauce, are you? Yeah. Fuck you! It is not gravy. It's, it's, it's gravy. red sauce. It's marinara sauce. It's red sauce. It's not fucking gravy. Gravy. <laughs> you have triggered like three people without uh, even trying. It's <laughs> not gravy. <laughs> See? Frankie knows. Thank Luke you, Frankie. sitting there like, Jesus. if you say gravy one more time, Hold I'm going to shove a glass in your mouth. I'm just, I'm imagining like, you know, there's other Southerners out there going, hey, that's not gravy when you Where talk. are my brass knuckles? <laughs> I love you, Samir. Thank you so much. That is hilarious. What, what? This channel is a matriarchy. <laughs> it kind of is. Because I mean, everyone... Everyone loves their mother here, so. No, I don't. Yeah, you know. okay. That's so oh. weird. Okay, whatever. I don't even know where to go. You know, there was like a whole uh, who's it? The the uh, Paul Eckhart. You know, the guy that created the facts, the whole facial expression system. Mm-hmm. They, oh, they, yeah. He he went and he did this like thing in New Guinea, and he yeah, uh, he you know where they, it was a longitudinal study of like yeah of like fifteen years, and they they studied like you know men and women and how they deal with like conflict and they're like guys deal with conflict directly and then women the way that they do it is they attack relationships mm-hmm. they they poison the relationship around the person yes. and that was you know there was a, a brett something or other he came out with something in 2014 where he said that was where the whole feminism and sjw movement like one of the big things of it is because you have everybody on the internet where you can't deal with things directly so everybody attacks relationships right well and the so the thing that i always find really funny is they always talk about they have their specific bullet points of this is this is why we exist this is why we're fighting for equality that we apparently don't have and all this shit and they basically go through and they say well men tell you that you're too stupid to understand men tell you that uh don't worry we know what's best for you so we'll make the decisions and and all that kind of stuff you want to know the funny thing i've never once never once had a man who was actually ballsy enough to say any of that fucking shit to me and mean it i have heard it in my lifetime i've never had a man who was like dead serious you're too dumb to understand because you're a woman so let me just tell you i have had feminists when i question mm-hmm. certain motives during certain things that they've done tell me that i was brainwashed by the patriarchy and therefore was too dumb to understand what was going on but lucky wow. for me they were going to go off and they were going to champion on my behalf to which i replied with listen here bitch <laughs> not only am i that much more woman than you I don't get triggered or upset every time a man disagrees with me or a man explains something to me specifically when he knows more about the topic than I do. It isn't mansplaining. It's explaining. It's just somebody educating me on something I don't know. It goes both ways. The only time I've ever had somebody who's actually tried to mansplain, as you want to put it, it was really just somebody being an asshole. I handed them theirs. We moved on from it. But because you're too much of a fucking child... If if a uh, if a man is an idiot, yeah, I'll speak to him in the same way, and it like, uh, yes. oh, just pick up the thing and put it in the bin. 
Like, uh, it must be too, like, it's not because you're a woman, it's because you're an right. idiot. Like, exactly. Uh... And that, that's the thing that's always pissed me off is they're like, oh, but it's, you're just mansplaining shit to me. I was like, no, you're being thick and they're trying to break it down for you. It has come to the point where if I was like, I don't understand how X works and, and a guy goes, oh, well, X is, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, you're mansplaining, how dare you? It's like, you literally just said you didn't know how it worked and somebody knew how it worked. Like that's what happened to me in that class. I was trying exactly. to I was trying to explain to her the uh, I think it was the um, epistemology of evil, you know, in like a Western tradition from the Jews all the way on to Christians. And she was getting angry with me. Remember, I told you because I said that the Jews got stuck on evil. I because I used the word stuck, and yeah. she's like, I, I don't like you using the word stuck. It implies that they're inferior. I'm like, bitch, say <laughs> whatever you want. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. You know, okay, like, first off, the word stuck projected. does not imply inferior in any way, shape, or form. The word yeah, the, stuck the is stuck on history. Are they inferior? It just means halted. Yeah, it doesn't. They, they got stuck on you know only having their uh, their same family members marrying too. <laughs> well, yeah. well, you're using you're using the word stuck, and I'm feeling very attacked. Exactly. It feels very violent. <laughs> You know, she's you like, know. It, it implies that they're inferior. You know, and I was getting pissed because I'm like, can we move past this? I just want to get to the end. And she, you know, it was just getting on my nerves. Okay. And so this is, and this is probably one of the biggest problems that I have with these kinds of things. And I swear we'll get back to the topic yeah, at hand. You and your teacher sound like a really bad date. So um, this is, this is what really pisses me off. Right. When I was in high school, my first year of high school. I wanted to, I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted to stand for something because that's what you're supposed to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So I stood for the dumbest motherfucking point I could have. And I realized it too late. What was it? I don't even remember. It was, I said something about one of my teachers said something and I said he was being misogynistic. I have no idea why. I didn't know. I didn't say misogynistic. I said sexist because I'm not an idiot. And I know that there's a difference between those two words. Uh, So I had said that he was being sexist. And he was trying to move the class along. I legit stopped the entire discussion of the class to screech at this man that he was sexist. Well, was um, it like your, your math teacher or something? Because that'd be hilarious. You know? uh, not far off. I like he's doing a quadratic equation and she's like, you're sexist. You're so sexist for this. Why is X better? And why is it fair? Whatever. Like, no. So uh, so basically. Um, Are you implying causality? <laughs> okay, here's the joke. Here's the joke. Uh-oh. It's oh, uh, x y is greater than two x. What you saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the, the chromosomes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. No, so I I had made a huge grandstand. I think at one point I stood up to make my point more effective, and then after I said it, my teacher looked at me and he smirked and he was like, "Well, that is an opinion." He was like, however, to get back to what the class was talking about. And he just like rolled straight past everything I said. And I was stood there in the center of class and I went, I am so fucking dumb. And I was like, I, like I was in too it, deep. Though. That's a good way to do it. Just kind of ignore you and move on. Well, yeah. it, it actually, it worked really well because I realized that I had, there was nobody, like in my head, there was going to be the entire class was going to be like, yeah, this is how it goes. And like everyone in the class was like, look at this crazy ass bitch. Like, well, that's uh, what trying to learn. That's an opinion. How about we get back to the subject at hand? <laughs> my processes. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so we have, uh, we actually had a really good question. Hmm. Um, where to go? Where to go? Well, we're sure to derail it. <laughs> I know. That was, a, that was a fun derailing though. <laughs> it was well, and so the the point was is that that's the same thing that the women now are doing, but they're grown ass women as opposed to like stupid teenagers. So right? I think what we learned from this is that Shay's impetus for inspiration is emotion. Very, very much so. Yes, that is where all of my writing comes from is emotion. Who, who's Sean um, Gordon Murphy from afar? Oh, oh, from afar. But what's who's that guy? Do you know, are you asking like in earnest? Uh-huh. He's, uh, oh. I, I know he's big in the comic scene, and right now he's, he's, a he's comic set on all sides. Guy. Yeah. I mean, does he look like a butt or something? Like, what does he like? What does he look like? <laughs> he's a pretty well, uh, good-looking guy. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> good just to make sure it wasn't being insulted. So, if it looked like a big <laughs> ass, like just walking on the street. I was like, okay, well, great. You know. 
Uh, so Unhinged wants to know, do you feel the artist can sometimes hinder the writing process like yes. screening initial concepts? Yes. So of course, Will is like, yes, absolutely. Yes. Act, well, well, like my considering your artist is your boss, I think you might have a, yes. a bit of a different perspective <laughs> than the rest of us. I was gonna go here with the story though, and now you what is why is there an <laughs> elephant? No, I find you just it's say, say, say no. Say no. And I go, <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I find that like me and my artist, like we kind of, we work well together in that we're both strong in areas where the other is weak. Mm. It's like our, our different strengths kind of help make the project better than the script itself. Well, um, if I'm going to be honest, like, so a perfect example, uh, I was talking to Luke about some nightmare that I had had and I, I'm sitting here trying to describe it and I've, I kept running into walls because I was I was trying to pull back something out of a memory that was fleeting. And instead of because Luke was like, I, I feel like I kind of want to draw this because it sounded like it was really intense. And so yeah. from a drawing standpoint, he was like, well, what kind of clothing were they wearing? What was the setting of the area? Like how old or young or, you know, whatever. And he starts asking very specific pointed questions, which forced me to think about it a little bit more. And I was able to, to recall probably, I, I would have only had about 10, 15% of the story if it weren't for talking to an artist who was looking at it from an entirely different perspective. And because of what he wanted, I ended up pulling out probably 60-ish percent of a story that was a dream. And if it, if it weren't for having an artist there, this would have never become anything. But now it's actually something that we're looking at collaborating on and trying to put into my anthology that I'm hoping to do next year. Is this a Screecher? No, uh, no, no, no. Screecher was a different one. Yeah. The, another the another horrible <laughs> traumatic dream, right? So <laughs> uh, I've had a really rough run with sleep lately. <laughs> Not I, don't nice I don't know. It just sounds like a. Uh, I, well, it's not the rear, so I guess it's not a. <laughs> no, it's a. It, it was a soul scream. It was a, a just. There's a picture of it on my Twitter. Go check. It's. Well, I think yeah, yeah. I think you showed it to us. It looked pretty Actually, cool that was there. really cool. It was very Giger esque. The one you posted. Thank That's you. exactly what X said. Yeah. It was like bright Giger. Yeah, it was uh, super <laughs> fucky because that was almost exactly what it looked like, and it, it was super for a very fucky. Long time. What did you say? It was super fucky. 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 Fucky yes. like, yeah. I, okay. Are you new fucky. here? I make new words. Come on. I am advancing the English language. Fucky. fucky That's what you can never. call it. You're sure. assuming Will's paying attention. <laughs> I always pay, I pay, I pay you, know, you just want to like do the Mel Brooks like fucky? You know? <laughs> no. Fagless? No, just Mary. Fagless? Wow. Oh, you guys. I mean, I think this entire process is not this isn't a direct uh a direct like extension, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, like you hold a spirit, it's an extension of your arm. That's not what this is. When yeah. you, you're creating a comic book, it's it's an assemblage of ideas. One of the, the greatest ways to write a comic book that, or, or to like kind of design the process of it to figure it out was, I think it was like Jeff, whatever on uh, world class bull something. And he was talking about his teacher and he said this was like the dumbest idea idea ever but i thought oh that's actually really clever his teacher he took a class on making comic books and what his teacher did was like you have to make a collage like you cut ideas from a bunch of different stuff and you have to make it work and then when they advanced what he did what the teacher apparently did was like he gave them you know sort of like what mark does you know he gave them the pictures and everything and they had to create a story from it and i was like that's actually really interesting because that's basically what it is when you're creating a comic book i have an idea the artist has an idea what actually comes out at the end of that is a translation of both of our ideas it's sort of because he doesn't understand me, I don't understand him. And so somewhere in the process, we create a kind of a middle ground transcript, you know, and yeah. that's what people get. What, it's we was, what we were saying earlier about writing the Marvel way, and I was like, oh, that's kind of what I do. The stuff that I'm doing with artists, like uh, mm -hmm. I send them what I call a jazz script on it, like, uh, which is like a run through of the story with all of the beats and shit. And it's like, all right, draw that. And then give it back to me, and I'll dialogue it after in it. Like, uh, I know exactly. You're talking about pocket changes when you call it jazz. Uh, sure. 
<laughs> sure. sure pocket changes is where, when they play like the way the jazz was is it wasn't like uh, exact and so what they would get is they would just have a book of like the chords they wanted to play and then they would have like changes that they wanted to make and so they, you know you ever seen like uh, back to the future the first one where he talks to the guys and he says you know in the key of blah 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 watch me for the changes that's that's what it's, it's pocket changes and uh, okay never never quite understood that but thank you <laughs> like, no, I never, sure I never that knew that's what he was talking about. Like a thing. <laughs> no, I remember that scene from Back to the Future. I just never knew that's what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think if, if we're going to, like I said, my, my position is so unique in the, in the panel because I'm not the boss of what I'm doing. And, um, you know, I'm working with a guy who's had images in his head for more than a year and he will not budge on a lot of them. Right. And so it, they become granite landmark uh, landmarks in a kind of a blank landscape and you have to figure out how to you know lash them together and um that's why we had to develop a very unique process to work together because he wasn't going <laughs> to buy you go off write a draft return it to me and i say change this and change this because it was going to i have to read his mind otherwise we're not doing this and so right. the the way we came up to do it is in real time which yeah. is we do skype sessions we have a document. We, we, we hash out his outline. I take it. I digest it into a living document that's color coded for the, you know, the, the big beats, like Mark said, and then the strings between them. So the granite mm -hmm. with the with the bridges between send it to him. We have another Skype session. He's got all of his notes. We hash it out again. I digest it. And then eventually it's starting to take shape and narrow down into something right. that a lot of people couldn't work that way. They get too frustrated. You know, yeah, well, because it, it feels like you're you're constantly like three steps forward, two steps back. Like you're, you're constantly feeling like you made a bunch of progress and then having all of that progress undone. And you're like, oh, we got that's the we only way I can get in his head, part. you know, in real time without doing a lot of work that's going to get shat on mm -hmm. and it's going to be thrown out and doing it as efficiently as possible, which is like we <laughs> he approved all this stuff. Now I'm going to write a bunch of stuff in between from the jam session. Mm -hmm. He's gonna look at it and go, "I want this, this, take this out. How about this? How about this? How about this?" And I'm recording it, so I'm able to play it back and write it all down. Right. So, so you don't miss anything. Right. And I think so far that's the best way I've discovered or we've discovered to work together. Otherwise, it would never well, work. You know, that actually brings up a really interesting point because, like, way back in the day, right? The only thing that you had is a pad of paper and a pen or a pencil and like that's what you had to use and now we've got so much technology so for a lot of you guys do you feel like the technology has made things infinitely easier do you think that sometimes you have too many options it makes it complicated like how how are you kind of balancing and using that in your process i think it depends on the dissemination that you're using and what i mean by that is like if you've got if you have one or two mediums that you're using, like you're saying, okay, you know, all of the new ideas go to Trello, but all of this goes to DM, but all of that goes to Discord, and all of this, then you will get lost and not know where anything is, and you'll get yes. nothing done because everything's too dispersed, it's too disseminated across, it's like diaspora, you know, trying to find the like, where do they all go? I have no idea. Um, but <laughs> the uh, I think the best thing to do is to keep it like one or two mediums. You know, like, I mean, I, I talk to Joe on Facebook. I talk to X most of the time on, on Twitter. And I, I think keep it simple because I think yeah. some of the best writing that you're ever going to get and some of the best, like, ideas actually come from giving other people the freedom to work with what you've, you've created. And uh, in, in our case, anyway, like, like comic books and that kind of thing. Because, I mean, I do believe that two or three minds. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I would say that I'm a pretty good writer. I'm, I'm a, a very good writer. But... And I'm a great storyteller, but I haven't done comics for a long time and I haven't done visual storytelling. And so they have a lot to offer. Like I said, like that head camera, those other things that I just, I don't have those abilities, even in design. Like it's amazing to me, the amount of storytelling that you can say with a picture, with how someone is designed. And uh, I don't think that way, you know? So when I started <laughs> creating the characters and, and asking somebody to design them for me. I didn't think that I had to get somebody later who was Xevious who came in and he was, I remember it was because it was so annoying. Uh, my girlfriend actually, who's an artist and, a, and went to school for history and design and a bunch of other things. Uh, she said, this character's boring. Like it's great, but it's boring. 
and You're I was like, like oh, "Are you kidding me?" Thanks. And it's you know, I was like, "Ow, okay." And but then she explained why, and I said, "You I know what? You're right. Hope so. Like you can't this is tell. Boring and you suck." And I know, right? It. That'd be great. <laughs> I mean, it, at least at least she was honest about it. Well, yeah. she was. She was. It was. She was immediately. It was within the first like thirty seconds, and she looked distraught. You know, like I had, like she had destroyed me. Like I was a, a, a dead puppy. <laughs> you know, like she had kicked a puppy, and I'm like, I'm fine. I just I have to. I'm realizing now how much work I have to fix this. Right. You know, so then I go to go to the designer, which in this case is Zevius, and I'm like, so is this boring? Within three seconds. Now, bear in mind, we've been working on this for six or seven months. Within three seconds, he's like, and the short answer is yes. And I'm like, Jesus, dude. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Where was this feedback six months ago? <laughs> I'm like, you okay. only created 20 pages, right? <laughs> A very important sticking point that uh, unfortunately I've had to digest this weekend. Always be honest with people. Yes. Be honest with people about the quality of their work, about, about what's going on with stuff, because the only way that somebody is going to be able to rise and, and improve and be better is if we're honest with each other. And yeah, it fucking sucks. It really sucks to, to message somebody and say, hey, I really like how, how this part went, but the, some of it is just not not quite gelling as well. Or, you know, hey, your writing is getting real shoddy or you're super wordy or whatever. It's really, really difficult to do. But if you respect somebody as a creator and if you respect the art form enough, you should never be afraid to say the truth about it. Um, you, just maybe don't be a raging asshole when you do it. That would be uh, constructive benefit. criticism. So don't you know? be a will. Don't. Yeah. Don't go full. Will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go like quarter. Well, hey, you guys, I'm just messing with it. <laughs> well, that's fine. Right. I mean, Honestly, that's where um, a college education actually came in handy. That's how you know you had a good teacher if he will just straight talk shit to you. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, when he puts an A on your paper, you feel like you're on top You've of the world. It. Yeah, you right? earned like, it. Yeah. If that guy gave you an A, you feel like you could do anything. I talked to my cat. I've had a couple of professors that are like that who, you know, just brutal to you. Mm -hmm. Tell you that you're pretentious, that you, you know, using too many words, you're verbose, you know, and, it, but what do you do? You go, fuck that guy. And you go back and you write the best paper you can. And yep. he ends up giving you an A and you're like, I earned that fucking A. Yep. Yes. You know? And that, well, and that, that helps shape you, you know? That's one of the things that I think has always been really frustrating. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Stat. Um, but yeah, one, one of the things that's always, that's always been really frustrating to me is I, show something to someone and I get, oh my gosh, this is really good. And I'm like, mm. It doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. And then I'll show it to someone else. Like, oh my gosh, it's really good. I'm like, mm, I feel like y'all are lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> then I go to somebody and they go, oh, it's okay. And I'm like, oh, what did you like about it? <laughs> like, yep. tell, tell me something that I fly fucked up. Tell me what I messed up on because I don't need you stroking my ego or like, well, she's a girl. I don't want to make her feel bad. Oh, like, Christ. no, tell me, tell me when something sucks. Please. Yeah. I don't so want to spend like months working on it. Well, I, what I tell people is that look, you can't build. I mean, it, it's it's such a cliche, but you know, cliches are, are there for a reason. You you can't build on a shaky foundation. If if somebody's just lying to you and they're just giving you bull crap, you can't yeah. do anything with that. You but can't build mention, from that. That's not only is it bad for whatever that piece is, but it also is bad for that relationship with that person because when it, it eventually comes out that it isn't good or it's not, it's not up to whatever standard you're hoping for. The you can't next trust time that you talk to that person, you're like, yeah, whatever you say is just going to be overly saccharine. You're not actually going to mean it. Yeah, it's like a Hallmark card. Exactly. Mm. Um, I did see another question. Talk amongst yourselves while I scroll. <laughs> so what do you think of the Shea woman? No, for fuck's sake. Uh, I don't know. Mm. She's like 6'1", isn't she? I don't <laughs> yeah. She's very intimidating. She's like a am she's a pale Amazon. It's kind of like yeah. you, you Alabaster, guys, thank you. All right. She's did you truly really an Amazon. Did you Alabaster, Alabaster Amazon? I like Alabaster. that. Did you it ever watch that's Azonance, right? Azonance? <laughs> yeah, she holds a bunch of tin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I found the question when y'all are <laughs> done being jackasses. Uh, Leg Kick wants to know what yeah. is better for you guys, a writer artist team or an arter, or artist writer by himself? Well, the dream is to be an artist writer, right? Because then you don't have to pay an artist. <laughs> That's, That's a good point. Sure answer. Like, if you get all the money for yourself, then 
if, especially are you like half can... falling asleep or like getting a hit off a bong? I can't tell. Uh, we'll go with the first one. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, look, uh, if you're if you're you have full creative control as well in it, if you're both, like, and that's you true. Don't, you don't have to write yourself as detailed a script because you know what it is already. Like, uh, you could probably do it in bullet points and shit. Well, yeah, I, then, yeah. If it's bad, you only have yourself to blame. That's true. I so for me, I feel like I'm hindered if it's just <clears throat> me, but that's because I've I've tried the just me writing without spitballing with anybody else around for two years now, uh, and I have exactly like six pieces to show for two years worth of work, and they are all like one pagers and very undetailed and so it's like yeah i i personally like working with another creative mind especially if it's one that doesn't do what i do um because mm -hmm. i feel like they bring a very different perspective and that's that's why for my anthology that's why i have a couple of pieces that have a specific story that i want told with art but then there's other pieces i just want to hand to an artist and be like read and let me know if, if anything speaks to you and if it does you know, let's talk about what kind of things you're you're thinking. Do up the art, and that'll that'll be what's in the book because I want to see what other people pull from it. I'm lucky with my brother that we're like minded and we'll direct the comic book together. And the cool thing is, like, if I see something visually in my head, I'll describe it as best as I can, and he'll just translate it to the artwork. And so far, it's gelling and it's working for us. So I got lucky with that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll direct it with. I used to draw, but I won't pick up a pencil now. I mean, forget it. <laughs> oh, Why? Forget about I it. I just won't forget it. It's <sighs> yeah, it's not, not I, since the incident. <laughs> not since <laughs> the incident. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's dramatic. Was it we like hamster style or something? What are we? <laughs> what? Fuck. They're, they're saying you had a tragic What's accident happened? that kept you from drawing. Well, I get the hamster joke. <laughs> I, did, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Frankie. You know we love you yeah. here. I don't like when people take shots at me from a computer. I like oh. it face to face. So we can go mano to mano. <laughs> okay. Show your face, buddy. That's, that's why you I really, that's where, that's where I really, I don't give a shit if people take knocks at me because, you know, Keyboard commandos. What are they gonna do? It's true. Mm -hmm. No, it's keyboard gangsters. <laughs> That's how we say it in LA. Gang gang so, so Shay, guess what? I think we're all buying the monitor. <laughs> uh, you remember that thing I told you not to to put on me, and you did uh, that whole forgetting my power cord somewhere else. Yeah, thanks oh, for I saying that because and I we left it at my friend's shit. house. Oh yeah. Good job. No, no, no. Yep. Uh, so I'm I'm working on a, a backup computer here. So if I suddenly just drop out, that's that's what happened. Went out to the car and got his battery out and like <laughs> he's like trying to get to work. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. I've reminded this joker like three fucking times about this fucking I power bought cord. A second power cord. He bought a, a go... second one so he wouldn't do this exact thing, and he did it anyway. And I told him it yeah. was going to happen because it would just be his luck. And so what's happening right now? Uh -huh. exactly. Ooh, gonna do what uh, I do. Steal. Okay, that does not seem to help me one bit right now. I stole from Google. You can do the same. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> no, I the power cord is over at the, the friend's house that I the dogs that I was going to yeah. uh, take care of. Yeah, had the laptop plugged it in. Totally left the power cord there. What what, what percent so I, are you at right now? Uh let's see, nine percent. Oh, Good that's gonna go fast on a Mac if it's a Mac. No, oh, fuck no, it's not a Mac. It's a it's a it's a PC. You got like a minute left if it's a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Thanks for coming so just... by, Blobfish. <laughs> Bye, Blob. Oh, yep. Yeah, there. Oh. There, you, there you went. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he goes. Oh, they, but they, does Shay go too? I think so. Are we alone in this room? Are what? we not even on the net anymore? <laughs> and another one bites the dust. Juice, juice box, you there? Boom, boom, Yo, boom. Tommy, you there? Yeah, oh, I'm still here as well. Okay.
What about so, Frankie? Frankie, you there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Frank, Frankie's fucking dancing down there, man. Eh? Yeah, we're still going. <laughs> okay, we're still going. <laughs> Frankie's like shadow boxing or something. I don't know. Okay, good. I was about to say some really nasty shit. I was like, okay, are we still alive? Okay, no, no, no. Wait. wait. I want to take this opportunity to tell everyone watching to make sure that they're subscribed to my YouTube channel. <laughs> 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 we do the CG UK shows on Wednesday at 5 p.m. EST. Come along. It's funny. Uh, check out Fusebox on YouTube. Uh, check out Outlaw Nights on Indiegogo. We're in demand. So, yeah. Oh, just <laughs> drop a gun now. Hey, Frankie, you, you want to hawk something? Through the Woods. Graphic novel still available in demand. Woo! Awesome. Goodbye, Sins of the Fae. It's on Indiegogo right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, and Black Flag, Pineapple Perception, it is now in, in demand. <laughs> <laughs> demand. It sounds like you almost forgot that. You're like, Black yeah. Flag, Pineapple <laughs> Perception. Whatever the that always makes my me want to say that, like, uh, that weird Korean Kitama or whatever, you know, Pineapple Pen. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I, I assure you, it's it's a very vital to the story that it's called pineapple perception. <laughs> we didn't just say that. Eh, fuck it, it's called pineapple perception. Who cares? You know, like I, I designed this process. I'm you know, blood it. honey, whatever. Who cares? It just take something and <laughs> mash them together. Two pieces of food and you know a sensory, you know, sensory word. Uh, apple finger. Exactly. <laughs> um, apple finger. <laughs> Is that Shay? And there she's back. Look at the look of shame on her face. It's a total failure if you fuck up on your own stream. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh he's out again. How many you will, will was Will. While you were gone, we took the we took the opportunity to pirate your channel. So yeah. Yeah, I'm very terrified to watch this. No, that's you know so happened. punny because you're such a you know. <laughs> anti feminist. You do behave very much like them by kicking me out. <laughs> no, I, I behave like a person with a strong sensibilities and uh, realizing when somebody's an asshole. Would you ever do that to a cat like this? No, of course not. If the cat wanted yeah. to be on camera by himself without you, he would stay. If I just hold, if I just hold him here, will you keep me on no matter what? I, I don't say? know how much shit are you gonna talk while holding. <laughs> Is this how you get a date? I mean, what <laughs> is <laughs> uh, this cat no actually? This cat got me laid when I was eighteen when he was a kitten. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, look at yeah. look at what There's happens a, when I'm the alley gone. Confection right there. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I said, look, I have a kitten. And this girl's like, oh my god, and I'm like, hey, you want to go on a date? Sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's okay, Cosmo. I'm sorry. You're like, let me go. I don't. I don't think that. Well, at, least cat at least he's not him. like like a <laughs> linity throwing like, the cat you. behind him. You know, he's eighty eight years old in human years. Oh, oh boy! My gosh. But you way know. to go, Ethan. Thank you. Yeah, I don't. My internet decided to stop. So earlier today, we had a really bad uh, freak rain slash hail storm that came out of nowhere and lasted for like an hour. Knocked out our power for about another hour and then completely went away and it was like clear sunny skies. It was really fucking weird. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Those girls sound horrible so I on. No, I shouldn't have that kind of voice. I was just... You know how girls go crazy when they see a kitten? You know, it breaks the ice. Does it? So, yeah. I don't talk to the guy. I talk to the cat. Exactly, but she'll tolerate <laughs> your presence enough to get in a couple of words. For a second. <laughs> For you a know? second, <laughs> because you're like, Can you shut up, please. To I'm trying to talk to the cat. kitty. <laughs> um, but I do have a process question for the panel, including Shay. Um, when we say process, what's your guys' physical process? Like, do you get up at four o'clock in the morning? Do you write at night? Like, do you have a ritual? What's all your guys' process? Like, actual physical process. <laughs> Did you go steal a computer from somebody? Yeah. No, I I'm I work tech support, so I end up with technology all over the place. This is an old laptop that I had just for this occasion. He loses paperwork so. all the time <laughs> at the help desk. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, that's my question for the panel. Yeah. Um. So my well, oh, go ahead. I, I don't really have an answer. I write in flashes of inspiration in it. Like, as soon as I see the whole thing, then I just write it. So you just go right to the desk as soon as you have an inspiration? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, I'll write out a jazz version first and then, you know, go back over and shit. But, yeah. Hmm. 
I, I put so much effort into that stage before writing, getting it like a uh, have the whole thing mapped out and then just sit down and do it. I see. Can you play chess in your head? No. <laughs> well, no. I could, but I would draw. I play checkers in mine. <laughs> Mine is just a flea circus. <laughs> yeah, I hear clown music at all, at all times. Yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> and nobody's surprised. No. Nope. So, Shay, what is your physical process? Um, so, my problem with my process is that whenever I want to write, uh, I never seem to be able to. And then when I'm <laughs> too busy to write, like working all of a sudden I get hit with like every single fucking gem of inspiration. So my process usually involves making sure I always have a pen on me um, and preferably some paper, if not paper, then, you know, my arm will do. There's a reason what, that I don't have a tattoo. What, what's the, uh, so what, what's the weirdest thing you, you've uh, written something on? Like lips um, on a napkin? Yeah, I've done napkins. I've done so because I my second job is cleaning. We have uh, toilet paper rolls that have like the paper surround. Uh, it makes great paper to, to write stuff on. So I'll rip that off and <laughs> jot stuff. You just down write a story it. like on the toilet paper and then put it back. Make someone read it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's like Alexander Solzhenitsyn. She writes whole novels on there. You can't get out of that. <laughs> That's solitary confinement. <laughs> yeah, these these heathens that uh, work in the buildings that I clean that they would they wouldn't read anything. I'm fairly certain. Um, <laughs> trying to think of the weirdest thing though. I've I've written on like I steal a lot of post-it notes off of other people's desks to write. <laughs> oh wow! So I'll go, I'll be vacuuming, and all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, great idea! And I was like, who has a post-it note? Why the fuck does in this office have post-it notes? <laughs> Just go and steal stuff and just jot stuff down. Like hopefully enough that I can I can redo it um, when I actually have time to sit down. I my process is ninety percent me walking around my backyard vaping and imagining, uh, and then eventually uh, I finally sit down to the computer and start cranking out a script. I find myself pacing a lot as well, like in between those bursts. Yeah. You know, I don't know why I do. I just kind of get up and start walking back and forth and thinking and talking to myself. Me too. I feel I crazy. I got to be honest. When you have a I writing cannot... block, menial tasks are like the best thing in the world. Dishes, go vacuum the floor, mm -hmm. do laundry, laundry, whatever. Yeah, totally. Take the dog for a walk. Yeah, going for a walk actually clears clears my head better than anything else. Like, just getting outside, not thinking about what I was bashing my head against, and just, you know, going and doing something else. Mm -hmm. Going out for a walk, breathing fresh air. What are you going to say, Frankie? I said I put on my thinking cap. No, Is that what that... <laughs> he had to do it. He just kind of had to. He had to do Frankie's it. like 90% pun. Back. Have you not? I got to throw it back. Shit. No. They got to do it. No, but hey. I'll carry a pencil, usually on my ear, like a guinea would, and <laughs> oh I have God. to have paper near me or a pad. Uh, I'll write. I mean, I'll have it with me. Get an idea. I'll carry a pencil with me. Oh, I'm old school. Notebooks and pencil. Mm -hmm. Then I'll type it up later. Like Leonardo da Vinci. That's it. <laughs> uh, leg Kick uh, asked me if uh, I just sit and growl at paper until something comes to me and I start writing. Uh, no, I'll actually growl into my phone and then I'll start talking. I don't know if you guys uh, saw like the little short video that I did on uh, on my YouTube channel, Hard Goodbye. That was that was audio writing. I didn't write that down at all. I didn't type it. Nothing. That was just me saying it out loud, seeing how it sounded, and getting that inflection correct. Um, so I'll do that a lot of times, just because I like audio books and it makes sense for me. Well, and that, so that's another thing that I think is kind of interesting because I started doing that with the certain bits of writing that I have that I feel like maybe people reading it, they're not they're not getting the right pauses because I didn't put something in in just the right way. And so I've gone back and like recorded sections of uh, short stories and stuff that I've written to try and make sure that the right feeling comes across. 
Sure. And then if I, because I had people that have been like, well, I don't like how this is worded. And I was like, well, it's, it's actually kind of important for what I was going for. Um, so I kind of felt like doing a re- like audio recording of it. If they still didn't like it, then there's something that I probably don't have right in the wording. But if they sure. just didn't consider the pacing, then I just need to work on the formatting. You know what I mean? So it kind of right. helps like narrow down where the problem might be. Sure. I do whatever works because I work all the time. I, mean, I work you know, yeah. 16, 70 hours a week. So right. with just one job. And, uh, you know, and then in between uh, getting stuff from the guys or uh, if I'm writing something like I'm writing a prose novel, like a, then it's different. Like sometimes if I'm I'm big on the intro and so I'll literally, you know, I can spend weeks on one paragraph. And then once the paragraph is good, I'll, I'll jump through the chapter in like a day because I just I want to get that entry point right. And so sometimes that takes me forever and I'll just keep at it like an hour a day until I get it. And then when I get it, then I'll write for eight hours when I finally get it and be done. So you finally catch that spark and then it just kind of blazes up. Well, it's more like I want the entry point. Like I want this for, I'm, I'm anal about that, about the, I'm anal about my entry point. No, uh, (laughs) The uh, the first part that the you know the, the audience the customer is reading I want them to be able to feel immersed and want them I want it to be as perfect as I can make it and so that's just really always been my thing um, past that like I do a lot of like I'll write poetry to to hammer down an emotion you know if I'm driving around or something I'll stop at you know I'll stop in a parking lot real quick and I'll bang out like a, a quick sonnet that will tell me the emotion I want for that character. And I'll name it after that character. I'll be like, A1, this date. You know, and then I'll go back to that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I want I wanted them to feel this way. And then I'm able to put that into the story. In, a, right. in my best career book, every single chapter opens with the words, my fellow Koreans. Like, uh, <laughs> so you have the entry point immediately <laughs> for every chapter. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> It's like, it's, I, it's no need to change it. It's perfect. I can't, I seriously cannot wait to get this book. <laughs> this book. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just really, because I, I was intrigued by it. So I'm really interested to see how you took historical pictures and made a story where Korea wins. Yeah, well. <laughs> like, like must have been real selective with those pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and if you know, like, some military history or that stuff, you'll point that stuff and go, that's like not right. Like that's like <laughs> ten years out of date or something. Like that's <laughs> like five years too early. Like but, it's fine. Know, it's your question. world. It can be yeah. whatever it wants. Like they'll they'll develop nuclear tech. They like they already had a nuclear bomb. You know. <laughs> well, the the thing is, it's like a it's about uh like. Is Kim Il Sung really magic? Like uh, that's like the <laughs> question of it. Like. But it's it's like North Korean propaganda. It's so it's like, it's, yeah, it's like the opposite of Team America. Yeah, it's like Team America from the North Korean side. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to yeah, okay. he can, Best Korea. He can uh, fuck yeah. He can multitask. Remember, they said that he actually is capable of bending time because he can do multiple things at once. Uh, they they denied that. Uh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, that was the thing. Like, uh, they say that he doesn't pee or poo, like, either. Uh, Kim Young Un, the current one, he learned to drive when he was three years old. Uh, like, it's insane. <laughs> but... It sounds like Daniel Boone, you know? Wow. Oh my god. It was like David Crockett killed him a bar when he was only three. <laughs> right. Uh, like, Kick wants to know as writers, do you pro- uh, project and plan the amount of pages the story will take before you write, or do you just start writing and whittle down when you are done? Dan said 48. It's got to be 48. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. Like, yeah, it's simple for me. I have a boss. So he just tells me what to do. It's going to be 48 pages. Fuck. I got 60. No, you got like, at least we 12. Those, we did those trading cards said, hey, Will, I need bios mixed with, uh, I need a quote, data, bios, and it all has to be 28 words. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Hold on, I can do this. I swear. You're like, fuck, that's 32. <laughs> no, that I did. I had the little word counter up, you know, and I was like, yeah. What can I say? Four words in one. That was actually a good exercise to do those trading cards. 
Well, and so that, that's actually something that's really funny um, with a lot of, so the class that a friend of mine is in um, is business writing. And in business writing, they, they're very, very specific. They're like, well, it has to be over X amount of words, but it cannot exceed X amount of words. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, I have a range. And so I, I just typed. And this, I guess this answers the question for me. I write everything that I want to write. And then when I'm given a parameter of it has to hit this amount of pages or it has to hit this word count, I start going back there and I'm like, okay, where did I kind of just drone on. I was like, I could, I fuck that. That does, that's not important. I'm going to take that back trimmed. out. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, well, yeah, I where were you showing off shit out? <laughs> we don't need to talk you? about feminism here. Yeah. <laughs> where, where did you <laughs> belabor a point? You know, where did you over, over describe something? You know, those, those I, things. Twitter is a useful tool. Like for training on that. Actually. Yes. It's and it's like, so uh, it's weird, a real, it's so a real true. art form to like, be able to craft like uh, a, promotional tweet that has like every single thing in it like uh within the character limit it's yeah skill. <laughs> it's i mean and it's but it's really I mean, it's really it's fun hard to, to do, do sometimes <laughs> yeah like you'll be going through like right i need to get rid of 16 characters if i change this word then i'm down to nine characters to get rid of oh, if i remove all the full stops like if i move the spaces between these emojis <laughs> like yes yes okay exactly <laughs> bang up. or people have like ampersands. you know four words and nine 19 hashtags you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which one of these hashtags doesn't work take that one out <laughs> Or it's like like in the in the writing pro stuff, some there's sometimes I'll at myself because I'm right I post it from the Red Valkyrie Twitter. And so sometimes yeah. I'll at my actual Twitter and then other times I'm like, I don't got the character count, Shay. Like, you know who I am, just fuck it, go to the channel. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> go to the channel, my name's there. <laughs> Uh, so on the question of the page count, the page count is just the multiple of the length of the beats like that you've got to write. Do it in 28 pages. You just know you got to write each beat shorter and it look, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. Pay it, mm -hmm. see it differently. That's yeah, you can't. You can't get as wordy. So you if you said to me, you got 100 pages, I'd be like, right, I can do all this extra stuff. Maybe you said you got to do it in 24. It's just a measure of the length of the beats all added together in it yeah well and I, I think so kind of to expand on what you're saying i think that it really just kind of comes down to how much how much is kind of the icing on the cake for mm. you to to go through and explain and how much of it is like legitimately if i don't say this people aren't going to know what's happening and how much are you showing off that's a big one too Right. How much can I show in imagery that I don't yeah. then have to explain with words? I mean, right. I, I, was it Reminder? Like I don't know. There's, there's yeah, Reminder. Couple, Rick Reminder. The new, the, the new comic writers, which I don't like. Scott Snyder, Rick Reminder. I call them, you know, exposition alley, uh, because <laughs> like Snyder, he, I he can can't. See that. He can't. Reminder can't write a comic book that, that doesn't come with its own Bible. Like every have book he writes has its own. Have I read what? Have you read Fear Agent? No, I haven't read that. Check out but Fear Agent. I read like three or four of his books and they all came with like, okay. But they all came yeah. with like, you know, an, an exposition like at the beginning, you know, like some sort of Bible to describe like, this is the reason why these characters are like this. You can't just, you know, it, he doesn't move into it. He say he has to tell you first and then it shows it. And Scott Snyder does the same thing, you know, like, I mean, it, he has so much exposition, it hides the art. <laughs> And so I think yeah. there's a, is he the I, new like Alan Moore? Is that the guy? Hey, like, I don't know. He wrote with like actually, you know, you, you were asking about Sean Gordon Murphy. Sean Gordon Murphy and and uh, Snyder were on the like we're on Snyder's first book, which he started with, which was the like American Vampire or something like that. Mm -hmm. He he yeah. sent it in. They loved it, DC or whatever loved it, and then they made it. And you know, uh, Murphy was his uh, his artist. Um, but yeah, I mean, I yeah. think that. In this case, like a lot of people, like especially like what was it, uh, Seven to Eternity, one of Reminder's new series, like, kind of new. It's like two or three years old. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I found a lot in that is he's he's extremely vain with his own words. There's a lot of times the picture tells the story. I don't need your words. Shut up. Yeah. When you got Jerome <laughs> Pena doing the artwork for you, you damn right the picture tells the story. You know, like you it's see, like I mean, this guy understood exactly what, uh, you know, Reminder was telling him. I mean, there's like this one scene, you know, where they're running off. There's the suns and then outside the suns, there's the darkness. So you have the whole idea. He's encapsulated 
within mm. this, what are, what are we looking at? This is Sean <laughs> Murphy. I'm Gordon just Gordon. I'm yeah. showing it. So she's uh, like, I want to look at his beautiful self. <laughs> no, I, I want Will to see who he is being compared to. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <Not Murr. laughs> I'd like to think if Damn. I was gay, I could do better than him. <laughs> so anyway, that's great. So anyway. <laughs> But you know the whole scene is is like encapsulated yeah. within this picture. You can see the sunset, and you can, you get the idea that if they keep traveling toward the sunset, they'll be okay. But if they veer off the road, they go into darkness. The picture tells me everything. Yeah, it's but like, instead of just allowing that, he writes nine paragraphs around it. <laughs> it's like if Batman's perched on the top of a rooftop, you don't mm. need him to go. Oh, it's high up here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so high up here. I hope I don't fall from this giant rooftop I am sat upon. It's like okay. here I sit high above the city, looking down. Yeah, it's like Rorschach. Remember Rorsch Rorschach? Like he, he telegraphed him, you know? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just thought about it. I was like, oh, that's a lot of. Yeah, it takes a while to get through Watchmen. Uh, Unhinged wants to know if you. If you've had a steady writing process, has there ever been a time it bit you in the ass? And I'm going to direct this specifically at Ben first, simply because <laughs> he has not said shit in like three minutes. <laughs> so I've been listening. Yeah, I know. You don't get a lurk on this, you're on the panel. Come on. Just talk. Right. <laughs> well, um bit me in the ass. That I don't really know exactly what that means because like i don't know how it would bite me so in the ass i i think uh to kind of give it an example if, have you ever had like a process that was this is how i always go through and i end up doing this kind of stuff and you try it one time and it prevents you from being able to actually produce anything so it like you hit a writer's block really hard because you put such stringent barriers on yourself uh that mainly happens if i don't have a plan like, if I just am writing spontaneously, like, you know, just like, oh, let me see where it goes. Like, I'll I'll usually hit a roadblock when doing that. But, like, like with, with Outlaw Nights and all, like, I took the time to, like, outline it out to, so I knew where it would, where I wanted to go with it. So I was able to fill in the gaps that way, and it worked out really well. Hmm. Anybody else? Frankie? Yeah, You've well, also been quiet. Mm. Yeah, after an hour of writing, you think you have an original idea. You go, hey, Vin, what do you think about this? He goes, oh, yeah, that was a movie in 1984. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that come to? Mm -hmm. Hey, but, you know, that's a valuable resource, man. You know? I'm like, but I, didn't somebody you can... I didn't see the movie. doesn't matter. It's already been done. I'm like, shit, yeah. out the window. <sighs> No matter if you've seen it. Okay, but so if we're gonna if we're gonna be honest, it's already been done. That mentality bothers me a lot because just because it's been done doesn't mean it'll be done the same way. Doesn't mean it'll be sure. done to the same yeah, quality. You know. Now, if it's if it's you wrote like verbatim the you know script for the crow or some shit right. just <laughs> randomly right. like okay you can't you can't do that that literally has exactly uh, been I done for, my, for myself i've written stuff and i'm like oh man they came up with this idea yeah mine's different but, but it's close enough that people go it's kind of like that other thing and i'm like right. ah, you know what? i'll just scrap it completely I it's will. the pigeon not the crow you yeah. know <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, what, what you're talking so what does about, it do? Frankie? Take a dump on everyone? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Poo -poo dump my haters. Bears, so. Just my haters. Just on my haters. <laughs> so... you know, instead of losing your girlfriend, you lose your shopping cart. Okay. <laughs> I should let Mark talk to <laughs> you. On Halloween. It. Oh, I was going to say, I had that exact same experience when I invented the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> 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 That's a rough one, uh, yeah, because and, they are literary characters, you know. And uh, like, uh, I thought this is a sick idea, and it was like while I was doing the research, like, on what characters could be available? I kept noticing, like, in the categories, it would say, "So then, like, I to it." Um, to are you the speaking? 
<laughs> you're, you you got real off. mumbled. You're like the I, characters, uh, and then it just mumbled out. Did I catch right, a diner in there? <laughs> no, I, I was saying I that uh, I was doing the research for who to include in my version of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Right. Like, uh, and all the pages that I would go to would point me to the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and it like I'd notice it in the bottom in the categories and shit. So then I found that that was a real thing. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna answer, ask, did you meet Sean Connery? How was he? Uh, he's delightful. Do you want to um, sing with you like he did Stephen Norrington? You know what? Mighty cool. Max did it better, okay? All right. Anyway. All right, cool. I don't, my my I want, tests are well hidden. You guys could never find them. No. <laughs> I steal Continue, Mark. A, I will just mute well. There you uh, go. So to answer the original question uh, yeah. about times when the process bites you in the ass, yeah. like uh, if I don't have the inspiration, like I can't write it, obviously. And uh, sometimes uh, I sit down to write and the thing that comes out isn't like what I was aiming for at all. Like, uh, you know, like it just became its new beast on the way. Like, uh, and there was this one artist, and I looked at his work, and I decided. So you know, people say, "Ah, oh, make sure you get the artist that can best represent like the style of the work that you're doing." Mm -hmm. I thought that's a good idea, but like I like to do things backwards in it. So I was like, "I'll find an artist," and I'm so confident in my ability to write that I'll write something that suits his art style in it. Like, uh, so I find this guy, and uh. Uh, he's got loads of like military stuff and he's from the south and that. So I go to him and I pitch this idea for the Confederate Avengers, yeah. Like uh and it's a bit like the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, like it's got Billy the Kid, like uh and they've they're on like uh Roanac Island, like their teleporting base and shit. Like uh I worked out a whole thing and then I sat down to write it and uh I opened it with the uh phrase uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident and then like half an hour later i'd written 12 pages of this completely different thing in it like uh <laughs> which <laughs> like i said to the artist i was like i've written like 12 pages of this thing but it's like it's nothing like what i said i was going to write for you in fact it's horrible and you're going to hate it like uh and i sent it to him and then he drew it and it's like, <laughs> Did he <impact> it? <laughs> no, he he liked how uh, like controversial it was in it, but no. There's, there's, there's no way that I could release it. Like Comic Skate just wouldn't buy it. It's like a, it's like my Oscar bait, if that makes sense. In it, like, oh, uh, <laughs> but to just be so like offensive that it's your rise to fame kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So and, what was it like a, a black trans woman being a president then? Is that what happened? We already had uh, that. Oscar bait. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll show you. Hang on, hang on. I'll show you. Oh, oh, <laughs> I was going to ask, no. can I see it? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I knew that question was not coming the, from you. Not the black trans woman, but the pages. <laughs> I don't want to see he Michelle means both. Obama's he means both. I'm so terrified for what's about to pop up on screen. <laughs> With good reason. Yeah. Why, why should it be the greatest yeah. thing we've ever seen? We're all in awe. It's like Aria Divination. Every I'm glad I was able to out. get everybody onto the pigeon. Everyone wants that book now. Every time, you, every time Mark shares something, it's like Christmas morning for me. I don't know what's uh, up with y'all. Uh, you know, I I am always intrigued I mean, like, by whatever Mark has. It's uh, it's always just a little <laughs> terrifying. It's like Christmas when, morning, you wake up and you know have incest with your sister. Like it's so <laughs> <rough. Yeah. laughs> that, that that went dark fast. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I like, I like, I like, like I only caught half of that, and I'm like, I hope I'm not filling that in. <laughs> the, <laughs> the old folder. Did I actually cool. hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want, to, I want that to be a category of my mind. I want that to be your reality. Before I bring this up, Mark is, is going to get me struck. Because no, what I'm seeing right is, now... There's like no the way that it'll get you struck. Okay. Like, uh, I, all of the panel might be offended and hate me. That's but... fine. <laughs> it takes as long a as we don't get struck, it's fine. American right. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, I, think we should, I think we should all like, narrate this. <laughs> like that, that would be awesome. Uh, uh, yeah. Does that look like the American Eagle 
emblem for the clothing. Yeah, it's, it's that letter, isn't it? Like yeah. the A E letter. It's a um, dip bong. <laughs> coming yeah. soon, dun dun dun. American <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> eagle. So it says, mm-hmm. the Emperor, uh, someone, does someone want to read it for me? I want you, Frankie, <laughs> read this. Frankie, can you can you read this? Yeah. Yeah. Any persons reading this, you are one of the select few members of the intelligentsia. <laughs> If the commentariat granted this advanced access inside the pages of my latest project, American <laughs> Evo. American <laughs> Evo is a Kafka-esque satirical assassination of the history of mythos of America using recontextualized quotes to stitch together a propagandized alternate history of fascist America. <laughs> oh my God, it's it's so not the complete book. This is a sample scouting package we have put together if we can generate interest in producing this book. The chances are you oh excuse me, you've already too fast, hold on. The chances are you, the reader, have access to some kind and media platform that are open to gain access to in order to sell copies of this very book. Please take your time to absorb the incredible detail artwork by Tony Sizu, I like that, Sizu, and enjoy the book like nothing you have ever seen before. Then let me know what you think, if you have a break. Your feedback is very important to me. Love. Call me Mark. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so does anyone have any idea what this book is about from that? No. <laughs> well, it's about... <laughs> it's about the Commons Harriet and they talking to you and uh you're supposed to like it. Call me Mark. Yeah. There we go. Love. Yeah. Uh <laughs> so what's different about this from the other books that I've made is you know the other ones like I took pictures and wrote uh new words. This mm-hmm. one, yeah, I took words and wrote new pictures. <laughs> oh my gosh. Took took words that were already there and you found new pictures to couple with the, them the, the entire book is written out of quotes i haven't written a single word of it <laughs> uh, okay we hold these truths to be self-evident okay and then we have a bunch of pompous white dudes holding poodles yeah yeah the poodles are uh, white current yankee theme. poodle went to town riding on a labrador oh, fuck. <laughs> Say. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my there you gosh. Go. So See, just... I told you. I told you, didn't I? Like, there's no way I can sell this in Comic Skate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think that was a good move. Uh, I don't think funny. you can sell this in Comic Skate. I don't know if you can sell this anywhere without me. <laughs> I, just... you, could, wow. you could definitely sell this to the mainstream. They'd love it. I, uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all men. Wow. Are created equal. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm so these are all, are these both women or is this the other guy? <laughs> uh, I like the one being sick. That's my favorite in this picture. And they were endowed by their right, creator go. with certain inalienable rights. Oh my God. Why do we get Solomon Cain over here? All right. Uh, I, I won't make you read the whole thing. I'll just show you this one cool picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and oh, look wow. at this. Like, uh, oh god! <laughs> is this all new artwork that you commissioned for it, or did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice. But, uh... Oh my god! You named it after the most <laughs> racist movie. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, and as well, uh, oh. it's not. It's not in that one. There's a a quote from Alan Moore in it where he says that all superhero fiction is derived from the birth of a nation movie in it. Like, uh, oh so I've got god. a big picture of Alan Moore like in that quote underneath. Yeah, Alan Moore worships a dragon. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna rapidly move on from that because <laughs> holy fuck, Mark. good call. Yeah, so good sometimes, call. sometimes, yeah, the process can bite you in the ass, and it like uh, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and it brings it right around. Bite you in the ass, and you can create a horrible parody of Birth of a Nation. It's like you, com- you, you commissioned all of this art <sighs> to just never be seen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like never. <laughs> Oh my god. But again, you could give this uh, to like Marvel or DC and they would roll with it. You would be you would be in every magazine, every article. 
You'd yeah, be dude. You, would, you, you, so you just have to preach BLM and give up everything you stand for ever. Exactly. <laughs> I'm already a communist. <laughs> You're halfway there. That one. There you go. <laughs> wow. Okay. Like Kick wants to know oh, whose wow. crowdfunder you guys are the most excited to read besides your own. I'm really psyched about Peregrine. Mm. I think yeah, Peregrine is going to be great. Yeah. Well, and that, so if you guys, and I, I shot the link over to him, but Scott's fucking, he's always busy. Um, if you've read any of Scott's work, he's actually very, very good. Um, I got a prequel to Door Kickers that I went mm. through and read. And um, I don't do military stuff because I'm in the military and it's, it's just boring because right. I do that. Yeah. It's but I, I don't, day in it. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't do it to that extent, obviously. Like it's not, I sit at a fucking desk, but I hear about this shit all the time and it's like, it's like my whole world. So when I'm trying to read comics, I'm like, please don't give me anything military. It's terrible. <laughs> His, uh, I actually loved and then was like, please tell me that I can still back this. Um, because he's he's very good at what he does and it's got a lot of supernatural into it which is really cool um but peregrine door kickers those are both two that i definitely am for lucent i can't wait i hell yeah oh my gosh i'm trying to get um so right now we're streaming against mike and um, jay and <laughs> obviously black flag i'm gonna tell on you I was about to get... Bitch, I wasn't done. Will I'm you wait spit. your damn turn? I'm going to call... You see, you know, he was getting defensive. Look at him. He's like, like arms crossed. <laughs> exactly. back I don't know. Like... I think the I think the art in Black Flag is going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm going to call 1-800 on snitching. Oh, damn. Oh, oh, I see. Shots fucking fired. <laughs> the negative space in that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting paid. I'm happy. He doesn't give a fuck. No. no I already uh, told you. Dan is like the guy on the escalator in Total Recall. And I'm behind him. <laughs> no, the, um, so so the lucent um the art is breathtaking that little bit if you actually go onto his his page and you read the little bit that he has there like i was instantly hooked and then i was like when is this coming out when is it coming out when is it coming out and he was like you gotta you gotta wait like i'm still working on it. i was like you gotta hurry because like i'm losing my mind this was really really intriguing i really want to read it um right. and then obviously black flag because i've got I've, I've been growing my collection of uh, Dan Frega art and books that he's been a part of. And like, I'm reading gear station right now and I almost had a heart attack. It was so much fun. Oh yeah. Show off your swag. It like will be coming you. eventually as another crowdfunded mm. project. Gear station. Gosh. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mad shout out to Shay for uh, sending me the extra gear stations uh, that she found. Yep. Uh, I, I have not been able to find any of those. Yeah, you can get them dirt cheap before the we do that uh, the gear station launch. If you day. can find them, they're actually really difficult to, <laughs> to track down. Yeah, they're, um, that's because people are snapping them up. Well, because they so, know we're going to do it probably. So those are those are my big ones. Uh, what about Mark? What are your what am I looking crowd. forward to the most? Obviously, I'm most look. Oh, you said apart from my own, didn't you? I can't even set up that joke. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait in. What I'm excited for is a sequel to Mary Boys. Has anyone here read mm. that? I just got that in the mail the other day. I cannot wait. Mary Boys is sick. Look, uh, yeah, the second one. Look, uh, Carl's working on it already. Look, uh, mm -hmm. that'll be coming along soon. That's exciting. <laughs> I didn't Maybe. expect to like Mary Boys as much as I did. Like, I thought it would be okay. I thought it'd be in entertaining, but My Chubbs is a good writer. Sure. That reminds me, I need to send Chubb a message, let him know that I got it, because uh, he was he was a little worried. He was like, oh, it sent out, like, at the beginning of last month. Let me know if you don't get it. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. real quick to anyone who's watching this, if you or anyone you know is waiting on international orders and they're getting antsy because it's been three or four weeks, um, a lot of them are taking six-plus weeks to get out. So just relax. Uh, maybe don't harass people like crazy because they're doing their damnedest to get it out to you guys. So just understand, um, I think stuff that I was waiting for from Australia, when I got it from uh, SK took, gosh, probably two, a little over two months because of everything going on with the pandemic. Everything shut down and had to go by boat. So it took forever uh and it's the same thing with stuff from like perfect 10 i haven't got yet and he was freaking out like oh i'm so sorry people are getting upset and i was like 
Dude, I, I'm expecting it to take a while. Uh, Chubbs took a while to get to me, but Elsa Dark didn't, for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> so just relax. Hi, uh, my Western Australians. Oh, it's Mike. Hey, hey Mike. Mike. You speak of the devil in the I comedy. know. <laughs> I just I just talked about how much I'm looking forward to Lucent. So. Yeah, she was just oh. kissing your ass like hardcore. It was great. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's not kissing his ass if he isn't fucking here, douche. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go oh, back sure and uh, watch my ass getting kicked. That's gonna be an interesting uh, kissed. That's gonna be I'm interesting not experience. Ass for Will can. <laughs> I, I volunteer him as tribute. Oh, I think it, I think Mike stuff is. I don't shit. think that's how it works. <laughs> I'll gladly go my I channel. <laughs> I will gladly pucker up and kiss Mike's ass. <laughs> you really don't want to do that. <laughs> nah. Well, Mike, uh, you you've been volunteered. Uh, <laughs> very straight straight regular, you something. know, give give me a little space in there. You've you been know. volunteered, and Will has been voluntold. <laughs> I'm a volunteer, and I'm almost like I can't control myself. <laughs> Zoning in. What have I come into? <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm sitting here, and I'm wondering the same fucking thing, dude. So. Yeah, I've been here for most of the show, despite the uh, the random drop that I had on myself. Um, well, we, we do have a successful book plan called The Pigeon. Um, <laughs> it's based oh. on the crow. That me and Frankie have to share ownership of because he first you know, pitched the idea. Um, and uh, and Will is determined to. Make I didn't even comments. recognize Frankie without the red nose. I, I realized <laughs> I've actually never seen him without the nose on. I didn't recognize him at first. Oh my gosh! I like how Frankie <laughs> like actually looking looks for around. It. He was like, "I think I've got it right there." It's like, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> I have my no one. Oh, nice! You got the horn. You don't have the nose. <laughs> I, can't I, can't breathe. Breathe. I can't breathe through it. That's fair. <laughs> Um, so Mike, what you came into is we were talking about what crowdfunding campaigns other than our own, uh, as if we all have them, uh, the ones that do have them, what are we looking the most forward to? Oh, as in what, what books are we looking forward to? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 Yep, yeah. Right there. Oh God. I'll have to, you, you put him on the spot here. I should have I did. prepared. Welcome to the channel. Let <laughs> me, uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, wait, wait. I have to. I love uh, how you laughed at that, Shay. I'm well, actually, um, much mirth. <laughs> much mirth. I would be I'm, excited for that crap. <laughs> well, I, I just am. saw a, a piece of artwork um, uh, that was just put up onto the uh, Battle Brick Road <gasps> campaign. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, my Kenneth Rockefeller. Yeah. He's like, I might to. make it an alternate cover. I was like, bitch, what is this mic? You damn well better. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to refund it. and rebuy because I'm not missing out on that. Oh, that's the same thing. I told him, I was like, if you make it an alternate cover, I will reback you. I will not refund. I will back again. Okay, like, okay, okay. I, I, this is my number one. Okay. Six Gun Gorilla. Ooh. I'm just oh, looking man. through my contributions now. I know that uh, Clint Stoker. Uh, gave that a big shout out because he said it was brilliant. Uh, everyone awesome. has just saying it's amazing. Uh, uh, Brian's that one of my favorite guests to have on the show. So yeah, Six Gun Gorilla. That's the, the big one I'm really waiting for. And and he said to me it's on its way. Nice. Yeah, yeah. He's been shipping like crazy. Uh, who else? Who hasn't gone? I'm looking forward to Death Sworn. Woo. Oh, yeah, good one. Good shout. Like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Death Sworn. I, uh, I'm Carl excited because I, I got the that. standees. Yeah, standees. nice. That's Can't awesome. Wait. Do you know who got the who got the figure? Mm -hmm. Who got the little figure things that they made? They only made a couple. No, I'm not sure. Because yeah, they look sick. They were handmade toys. Yeah. Well, it's the same okay. thing. Like Eric Weathers is doing that on Battle Brick Road. Oddity. I think was the I think Oddity was the first one to do it because that's actually what Sweens does. So he made the main character as a standee and he limited it to I don't even remember it was like ten or something. Mm -hmm. And then immediately was like I regret my decision because now I've got all these. He's like I'll send them to you unpainted unless you tell me otherwise. And I was like smart, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, what about you, Frankie? Uh, Will's first draft of the pigeon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, not pigeon, the- go sh- go shield that guy over there. Yeah. <laughs> not not the final draft, just the first draft. The fir- yeah, it wants it when it's still kind of shit. <laughs> I got <laughs> It's gonna be like the fifth draft. She's too. gonna edit it. <laughs> the pigeon oh. issue one. The mm. shitting. The shitting. <laughs> Wow. Messenger pigeon, bums oh and shopping God. cart. The splat. The splat. The splat. The splat. The yeah, well, they get, get Stephen Platt to draw the cover. No. There you oh, go. You go. <laughs> and then say splat on it really big. Issue um, two, the statues. <laughs> what about you, Will? Um, I'm actually very much looking forward to uh, Krager's hammer. Oh yeah! If you guys and haven't seen that, very under back, and I'm like, this is. I'm kind of sad that this thing didn't go big the first day. Yeah, I, well, he had kind of a quiet launch. I don't think that that helped much, but uh, he is. I, I do have him scheduled for Red Valkyrie, so he'll be on later this week. Yeah, man, cause I like all the art he's been doing for it. I like the kind of, the, you know, uh, even though he's going to do it in black and white, I have been enjoying the 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 um, promotional art where he just has like a kind of a pink speckled background with the black and white mm-hmm. and the kind of tank girl look he's got going. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I just Ever since he first started teasing, I'm like, I really want to see this book. And he's got that Joe Benitez cover, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So that one, I'm like, I really hope this does well. Oh, have you guys seen this one, Muffin Man? Uh-uh. <laughs> it's another, it's... Have you seen the Muffin Man? Have you seen the, the muffin, muffin Man? He lives down the Muffin Man. Lane. <laughs> lives on Drury Lane, what? Drury no, Drury. um... So Muffin Man was another really interesting looking one that like so many of these, I, I don't know if it's just a lot of creators are launching projects now or uh, it's COVID. I like I get that, but I'm the, the thing that I find interesting is like like this is so it's only got 197 and 10 days Ooh. left. Um oh. but it it seems actually really quite interesting in the first little bit there's a little girl this little girl who stumbles across this dude in a sewer that is a mushroom i think this girl oh, and she looks crazy right like this is this is such oh. an under scene uh book but like she i i saw something where she like stumbles upon him she stabs him for fun and then is like, ha ha, I got you. And he just kind of looks at her and he, he pulls it out and he hands the knife back to her and then like pats her on the head and then they become like best friends. And I was like, I don't know what just happened, but I'm really curious. <laughs> <laughs> like, this little girl is psychotic and she just stabbed the shit out of this, whatever the fuck this is. Nothing, man. Would you not stab that? I, but she didn't do it like I'm gonna try to kill it. She did it. I like, gotta tell you, if I saw something uh-huh. like that, I'd go the other way. Right. She. It's just. Oh, it I just like seems that. So right? interesting. Like, I definitely. This is one that I'm actually really curious to see more of for sure. But yeah, there's there's so many. There's just been so many interesting ones that have come out, and so many of them that have gotten such little attention. Um, you know. Can I go? Can I go again, please? Yeah, absolutely. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what I should have said was, have you seen Peep Hole Circus's book, Phantom? Uh, did you just get a text from everybody in CG UK like uh, you didn't push Phantom? <laughs> it's in the middle of the night. It's five nineteen in the morning. Yeah. No, nobody's watching. Uh, <laughs> nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. I... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good to know. I meant none of I meant none of my gangs watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, so one of the tiers on his so he's got the book and then he's got like two zines that you can get with it. And the, the tier that I bought is all the original pages in it for one of the zines. Like uh just, just scroll down a little bit. Uh you see this one on there's a book called Claw Cut, like which is one of the zines. Oh, it's all like, yeah, so, that one. I bought all the original pages for it, and it like and for just forty six quid, like steel that is. Oh yeah, he he's he's like selling this for insanely cheap. This is another one that I made sure to back because uh, I'm 
I'm very curious, like 48 pages of people's circuses, very unique art style, but it's, it's interesting as shit. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Like, uh, on the the first time seeing it is. Uh, I don't know, but go back. It's super cheap. Show show him the trailer. It's only like 31 seconds, I think. Oh, I'm going to have to reshare screen. God, what a boomer. Not a boomer. I wasn't planning on playing the video. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. I dig it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah. That's still yeah. live, and it. That's why I should have chose that one instead of a book that's not even a mailing list yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it still has five days. So if you're what if time you're wanting to mark five o'clock. Yeah, 521 now. That's oh, yeah, a good excuse. But yeah, if you're if you're wanting a really cool art book that's got super grungy, uh, really interesting looking art, that's definitely one to go check out. That looks awesome. Yeah. Who else hasn't hasn't gone? I haven't gone. I, I, I'm looking forward to the uh, Colton Crux. It's uh, yes. and a, oh. you know he calls it an occult uh, noir graphic novel. Seems like you know Cthulhu, like a, like a human detective going through like Cthulhu esque kind of kind of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft nice. kind of thing. Oh yeah, for and sure. I'm like, you know, I always love that because I don't know. I think uh, especially in in uh, new stories, most of the time, you know, you have like a super powered something or other. They even, you know, Constantine was originally like a, a a pretty average guy that knew things, and then he turned into like a super powered wizard. <laughs> Right. Lately, and he's he sort of lost that that kind of uh, vulnerability, but I feel like this character has that certain vulnerability, and it's it'll be interesting to see how he handles these things that are well above him. You know, oh, yeah. what, what is it? There's the, there's like book series, uh, Dresden Files, right? Where yes, it, I love the Dresden Files. You know, I like the Dresden Files, but like the Dresden Files can basically be broken down to Dresden does cool things, gets the girl, and does the thing. In a he cool doesn't way. always get the girl. Sometimes he gets he gets beaten bloody and left for dead. Yeah, but then he comes back and in a then cool he way. gets the girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he like rides yeah, they, a dinosaur in his pajamas. That's because a necrophiliac. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that's really cool about Colton Crux is the way that he's doing the imagery. So I actually talked to him because I've had him on um, before, and I. I'm getting the black and white version simply because of what he had said. He's going to do spot gold because gold is actually relevant to the story. Um, but that's the way that he always kind of envisioned it was the black and white. And this image right here that is just kind of, it's a really kind of iconic image. This is the like symbolizing all the times that Colton Crux has tried to like help these, these yeah. spirits and these people and has failed. And so now they're attached to him and they haunt him relentlessly. And they're all kind of vying for who's going to weigh on him the most in this whole image. And it's, I just mm-hmm. think it's really well done. Kind of reminds me of Necroscope. I don't know Necroscope. Not familiar. You guys never read Necroscope? Mm-mm. Oh, man. Oh, it's a <laughs> HP Lovecraft uh, Vampires. Oh, shit. I probably Brian, yeah, Brian Lumley, it's a probably a 30, 40 oh, novel okay. series. It's gone from the eighties up until the mid nineties. It's you know, it's seminal stuff, but it, it's kind of a the main character has access to ghosts, but his ghosts essentially give him their skills when he needs them. So oh. if he needs to like uh do something that requires a special forces skill, he's got this old SAS ghost that he met in a certain place like rent a ghost right well whenever he goes to a cemetery <laughs> he like links up with ghosts and they're forever attached to him so whenever he oh, needs right. their skills and so the first woman he had he basically he bedded down he got like <laughs> he got skills fed to him by some lothario that was attached to him um yeah, so, all the ghosts are wanking in the yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah do this why are you telling me to do that i want to see it yeah 
Yeah, well, no, but it's a great book. I mean, it's called Necroscope. It's, a, it's just the first one. It, there's 20 of them, but I highly recommend the first novel. <laughs> there's 20. I recommend the first. Just, I mean, because it's a complete story. You really need to read the rest. It's like Game of Thrones, you know? <laughs> Except Brian Lumley actually finished it. Oh. <laughs> So and this, this is another uh, one that's underrepresented too. Yeah, this is this mm-hmm. is a fucking crime. What are you like? What the fuck? Sixty five percent funded. Sixteen days left. How is this not funded? This is Jason. This is does, reminded does, me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He does amazing fucking work. Like seriously, look at look at all of the detail. Look at everything that he's put into this. Like, and I. Not that this is necessarily a selling point. It's just rather impressive. If you pay attention, he's in the chat. If you pay attention to his logo, you notice that his logo is a face that has one eye. It's because he's basically fucking blind in his other one. And this is the detail he does. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? I like, shit, I'm quitting. Yeah. That's why <laughs> I backed this one. Because it had, it reminded me of that old hyper detailed, like Eastman Laird indie look. Yeah. <laughs> like the yeah, dual yeah, state yeah. kind of thing. Well, and I love how he's done all of the the screening and the backs and stuff. So you've got all of the the dots and all of that kind of shit for a bunch. Of, it's just it's just so, ugh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. If you don't, if you haven't backed this, then I, I have backed it. So, ha, ha, Go back it, you I, asshole. Death Metal Hero recommends. <laughs> Absolute. But yeah, is that, it, is that how you sell books on this channel? Yeah, yeah apparently. Exactly. If you have a back, you're right. just back you I fucking you. asshole. I just say I backed it and fuck y'all. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's uh, that's another one that I think is horribly underfunded. And uh, granted, I'm I'm slightly biased because he did send me some art of his that is just. Oh, funny. okay. So are we doing a Zoe mm-hmm. Quinn thing here? This is this like is not a sponsored anything. This is this Gamer is Gate all over. Yeah. Right? If you pay, okay, if Zoe you pay Quinn. Attention, hold up. If you pay attention. To the the shit that's on his campaign and then you see other bits of art that he has done right tell me that this dude doesn't deserve to be funded like seriously i don't know i can't take you as a uh <laughs> party now really I, we can't take you as bipartisan anymore no. wow <laughs> you have been bought you know off <laughs> y'all are over here too not i mean not y'all's but like your project shut up <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have, I have art from so many different people where's that, that where's that poster by the way you're worse than the clinton foundation man you've been bought off by everybody wow oh, no. no they would kill me if, if i was by the way are we gonna do a poll for how and when just maxwell i was about to <laughs> three like, weeks from now hey Shay, are you gonna do the poll for just maxwell and we put in a buck each it's when she, assistant. For where and how she commits suicide. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, I'm unbiased, and I say go back absolute uh, because yes. Jason's awesome, and I backed it. So Death Metal Hero recommends. Yeah, and uh, and thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Luke has See? Been <laughs> See? <laughs> exactly. It's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> no to be so to be perfectly honest that's the checks simply, in the mail <laughs> that's simply a representation of of what his ability is and so like that's the kind of shit and if you if you <laughs> have paid attention to what jason's doing one of the really cool things that i think he's doing is he's he loves to just give shit away like he he constantly oh, says he has so much for you no to a lot of people, if you follow him on Twitter, William. I've got a box of Black Flag swag that says Red Valkyrie. Bride. The hell you do. I bought my swag. Thank you. <laughs> this is I have my bribe boxes for various personalities. <laughs> I don't get bribes. Come on now. Sounding um, like a mainstream comic person there. You must have gotten my address uh, mixed up. Will, because I didn't get anything. <laughs> I didn't get shit either. So. Oh, that's yeah. I seriously. Um, I bought Shay cheap. I just gave her the challenge coin. Hey, <laughs> you're worth more than that. I uh, thank you. you okay, the stock glasses. Fine, Shay, you get the stock glasses. Soul, soul, Ion. Don't call the host a shilly. We'll be put on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm at the bottom being shat on. Me and uh, Bancroft. I know, and no. I'm just an avatar. 
Yeah, no, ban you. Bancroft just joined late. You're being, uh, you know what, Mark? <laughs> feel free to shit directly on Will. He is right below well, you. Well, he uh, Bancroft is shitting on me because I am kissing his ass. Uh, so. <laughs> Look at the imagery. Oh my god. Know. Thank you. God damn. I need oh more beer. Gosh, I can't. I'm not, even, I'm not even drinking tonight. I am quite lowbrow. Oh my no, gosh. None okay. of us are surprised. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up. I'm gonna scroll back up to other questions and just ignore <laughs> <laughs> well, we're ignoring ignore people this. talk. Oh, every every time you come on the show, I always debate whether I actually add you or not. <laughs> Everybody says I'm entertaining in your chat, so... Yeah, you know, they can be wrong sometimes. It's okay. Oh, so you're shitting on your audience, too. So. <laughs> Is this... Are you... Yeah, what, are you... So you're... Never, I'm not going to get into this. I was, I've like had, a fetal centipede situation, you know? I've had, I've had a lot of moonshine tonight. <laughs> Where'd you get Apparently it? Apparently not nice. enough. <laughs> or just... Is enough. it like actual hillbilly moonshine? Like, where'd you get it? Uh, It's Smoky Mountain... It's literally my sold cousin in the makes good. the best moonshine out of bananas. So I did. I got blackberry <laughs> moonshine added into Pepsi. Shit's amazing. You got to make some Pruno like prison wine. No, oh. no, <laughs> you'll die. Yeah, I'm. I'm good. There were mm-hmm. What's the uh, fermentation process like on prison wine? Hey, there we go. There's a process <laughs> question. Do you really want to know? <laughs> no. Oh yeah. I watched a documentary once about life in prison and saw that they were brewing wine. Oh, I thought, terrible. If, the, I thought, if these guys in prison can brew wine in their cells and shit, why aren't I doing that at home? Like, so I immediately went home and started doing that. Like, we did uh, one. And I made That's this... Not uh, I made... All this cider exploded in my kitchen is the end of the story anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why. We did that's the authentic why. way. We actually yeah. hit it in the toilet tank. Oh I had to, God. like, repaint the whole kitchen. Oh. <laughs> so, no, Bruno, Bruno is vile. I'm not kidding with you. It's extremely potent, but it's vile. There was some stream. I, I think it was one of Ink streams where they actually did um they watched this guy that they said seemed like ink spots like they were they seemed like the same kind of person uh this guy showed everyone how to make closet wine is what he called it uh and basically it was getting a hundred percent grape juice drinking down a certain part of it putting a shit ton of sugar in it shaking it and then letting it just Ferment. sit yeah, yeah, that's how. That's what I did, but with apple juice, and yeah, then it blew it, up two weeks later. He's like, as long as you, as long as you shake it really, really well, it'll yeah. be good. But he, he did mention you do have you to gotta, go and. Like, I think for it. Pruno, you got to use fruit. There's cup a reason all those distilleries have you know venal. <laughs> You know, if I'm talking about cheap wine, rather than destroying my house or doing anything weird, <laughs> I could just go down to the liquor store and spend and buy literally a, a couple of bottles, a couple of dollars. Get some screw top wine? Yeah. <laughs> if I really want to slum it. <laughs> Don't need to you wreck wanna... my kitchen. What's the one that you get from Mad Trader Dog 2020. Is it two buck chuck? Two buck chuck. Is that the uh, Trader Joe's wine? That's the good stuff. Nah. No, I, no idea, no impact. I'm excited to say that we just picked up a backer. Oh, Woo! congratulations. Hell Yay! yeah. And I'm fairly certain they're in the audience. And, well, I mean, I'm thinking. But, and did yeah, Shay? Hopefully. Did Shay just boot herself? <laughs> yeah, again. She oh, probably she got goes to the bottom of the centipede now. Look how she high got, up I've gone. Yeah. She got, she got mad. She got I'm mad. I'm truly being shat on by everyone. From yes, yes, you are. From Ben all the way through uh, Luke down to me. That's a lot of intestines worth of shit. Like I look, said, I it's mean, that whole centipede situation now. You know. Look, I, you know, I Shay, never watched it. Shay heard that we got a backer, and she got mad, and she decided to leave. You know. <laughs> I, uh, someone better I refund that back book so she can come back. back. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to see the human centipede. I just it's like it's like salad. I'm not sure okay. if I want to see it. I no, have not no, seen no. it. You know what? You know I don't know. There was the whole cup girls situation. No, thank you. Nope, we, haven't seen that either. <laughs> I'm going to. Don't care. Was, yeah, I heard no. heard about that. I was like, no, I'm no. 
No. A, fr a friend of mine tricked me into that. Oh, I saw the bad beginning man. of that. And yeah, Ugh. no. <laughs> well, I I think just watching the start of Cecil's uh, streams is enough. He shows a little clip from Centipede. And that's enough oh. for me. I don't need to see any more. <laughs> You're like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm, uh, I feel culturally enriched. Thank you. Goodbye. I feel culturally enriched. Thank you. <laughs> That's enough cultural enrichment. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh. This is yeah, what happens when, when Shay runs the room. Uh, we talk about the centipede. <laughs> since Shay isn't here to stop me, I'm going to tell everyone that uh, one backer away from 515 on the Lucent. So Woo! Right. Oh, nice. Well, <laughs> and, uh, oh, 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 we were just praising you, Shay. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm only a, a 180 from 4K, you know. <laughs> there you go. Oh, heaven help us all. I need a new uh, lawn chair, so help me out. I'm good. I made five million Korean won. I did. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Korean million nice. in there. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. High oh. roller over in Korea, huh? She yeah. believes in A. They're not bribing her A. So what does that mean? Like you, you go to Korea, you could get the hot chicks. I mean, <laughs> the cost of living in Korea is about the same as it is here in the UK in North Korea. <laughs> Hopefully, it would be really poor, but yeah, cost the same. <laughs> Cuba's the place to go. That's my dream. Like, uh, you know what? The average uh, monthly wages in Cuba is yeah. thirty US dollars. Oh my god! For a month. Wow. For a month, yeah, because you Damn. because you get free housing and free healthcare, free education and shit. Like, uh, and, and then they tech. Go ahead. Pay like you pay like cost prices at the bodega. You know, everyone gets paid for the shit. Like, uh, but but the point is, I could sell two comic books a month in Cuba, like, uh, and live there. That would be sweet. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of socialist hell holes. <laughs> I just realized that uh, because I get um, whatever income I get from the Lucent on top of my wage, they're going to be taking half of all the profit that I make. Yeah. What? Yeah. Half. Isn't there well, a... Uh, 47 I, I was cents reading on about, the dollar. I was reading about the Australian uh, taxes and everything, and they have... I, mean, I don't know. There's a, a lot of different stuff they have over there. It's like... Because uh, I have a friend who lives in uh, the Gold Coast, and she and I were making a book for a while. And so we were looking into it together and it, she was like, yeah, I have to, there's some sort of accreditation that you have to come, that you have to do if you get money on the, from the out, outside of Australia. And then if you, if you don't, uh, or she said, if, if she didn't accrue that properly, they were going to, you know, uh, assign a penalty to her. Then I was like, Jesus. We have to take a <laughs> test to get money from a foreign <laughs> court. So, yeah, I didn't have to do that. I just I haven't have run into that. But uh, yeah, I I do love when I watch, um, especially U.S. politicians tout our free healthcare that we get here, without mm. mentioning the <laughs> uh, massive levy that gets put onto our tax bill at the end of the year for Medicare, plus the hundred and sixty dollars to uh, eighty to one hundred and sixty dollars you have to pay every time we go to the doctor plus all the medications and everything from the chemist yeah it's it's really free here. so it's really not all that free is it we went you know and we went to the hospital uh about uh three weeks ago it looked like cuba because this is a public Damn. hospital it, i mean the doctors they were all professional and they all had medicine but mm -hmm. the building man it looked like it hasn't been refurbished since 1965 or something hey everybody Vinny. Hey. What's up, Vinny? Hey. Yeah, I've just been working, uh, dealing with a little bit of a headache, but I'm like, oh, you guys are on. Let me jump on. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Just... So, how's it been tonight? Uh, you know, it's been entertaining. Uh, my internet sucks, so I keep getting dropped from my own stream, which is fun. Oh, Frankie shit. created the, the pigeon. <laughs> and I forgot my power cord, so I'm on my backup laptop. Which well, shit, he did. Him. I created the pigeon. Will, just... Will created it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Will. That's Will. Will created it. Frankie Will, made it better. Will and Frankie are better. going to write the pigeon. It's a uh, parody of the crow. Beautiful. But wait a minute. He, he had the mockingbird a while ago. <laughs> wait a minute. I'm, I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like we're Old stuck on an aviary kind of thing. 
Frankie's got bird themes going on. Bird shit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> were you watching that? Were you, did you see that bird. video of the bird carrying the shark? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just hilarious. Yeah, bird eating pizza. That's just takeout. You know, uh, Mike, I was going to say it's funny that you say how much you're getting taxed and everything because it's very similar in Maryland. If you have two jobs, job gets taxed about 42 ish percent because yeah. you're already oh, making sorry. an income. So obviously, yeah. you don't need the second income that you have because you don't make enough on your first. Oh, you know what you need to do? Get a third job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, oh, and it's just, that's I need the, the third way. job to pay the second job to pay the first yeah, job's taxes. To service the debt on the first college <laughs> education you got to get the job. So that's exactly what I do. What in uh, so Bancroft? Uh, does being corporate help you subsidize some of that? No, because uh, we have a thing here called Sole Trader. So it just goes on to okay. uh, without, unless I made an actual company, which is a massive hassle. Um, mm -hmm. and a whole big rigmarole, uh, it just gets added on top of my income. Okay. Uh, most people, most people who have small businesses here who just, you know, by themselves uh, operate as sole traders. Uh, there are other benefits, but, uh, they don't really apply to me because this is some weird new thing, you know, internet, uh, comic book creator. They don't really, we don't really have any benefits for me there. They're like, what's yeah. that? <laughs> it's just uh yeah it's just like my wife had it as well she you know she has a part-time job and she, you know we thought oh if you work a few more hours a week you'll get more money no they just taxed her more and she ended up getting less money than if she had of not worked that extra thing so that, i mean anyone wants to talk about uh no, 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 no. Uh, progressive you, you know, tax rates and uh, productivity that, that's right there it's just a surprise donation, man. It goes somewhere. Else. <laughs> <laughs> surprise <laughs> donation. There's a good one. <laughs> you work harder yeah. and you make less. Yep. Uh, how does that work? It's just really annoying. Probably more to tell us. No. That's capitalism, man. That's the system you guys are supposed to be defending, not me. Uh, give me I'll, that. Give me that I, sweet there's thirty dollars. A flat tax rate in capitalism. So if we can get that going, I think uh, we'll be better off. <laughs> Give me that sweet, sweet thirty dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, that's all I need. A Patreon, I could live in Cuba on a Patreon for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, okay, so like for example, my part-time job is um, fifteen ten an hour, right? And everyone's like, "Wow, that's really good. That's really good." And I was like, "Yeah, it's not too bad." Uh, when I work an eight-hour shift, I get a about 50 bucks and they're like oh, but that doesn't add up and i was like yeah are you, you catching on how this doesn't really work that well <laughs> i was like so 15 bucks an hour i should be getting more than 50 60 bucks for an eight hour shift but i don't because mm. i'm taxed that much 15, so 10. i tell you what you live in massachusetts wow. <laughs> that's a lot of people at once yep we were just saying like you know you're worth like 10 cents more than that Thank you. No, I, it's I, not I like what we were saying. So. At least. Yeah. At least 10 cents. Maybe even 20. It sounds like you live in tax Massachusetts. Uh, I, I do. That is that is uh, basically what Maryland is. It's just uh, so perfect example. I went to go register my car and uh, bought my car overseas for military car sales, which means that I got to buy it tax free. And then they turned around and said, so uh, to get your tax title and license, before we charge you again for taxes. And I was like, hold on a second. Why are you charging me for taxes if I already bought the car? And they said, oh, well, you didn't pay Maryland. So you have to pay Maryland tax for the car that you bought, not in Maryland. Nice. Wow. wow. Yeah. So don't live here. Uh, go to Delaware. Go to I mean, I, I come from the most corrupt city in America, <laughs> you know, so Where? New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Pretty much like New Orleans. Pretty much <laughs> all of our mayors, with the exception of one, were found guilty of skimming cash. You know? I come from the most corrupt state in the union. So I mean it sounds like they were just caught with what everybody already does. I mean we financed <laughs> the entire rail got. system that they stole and didn't even build back in California. We Jesus. we we're so stupid that we uh you know, we diverted uh, all of our water to 
empty into the ocean instead of feeding our uh, our agriculture. Oh, we do stuff like that. I mean, you know, we create the subsidies, um, you know, in America, and that what that does is is it makes it so that you give people an out, you know, and if you give people an out, they're going to take the easiest way, even huge corporations. So what of you course. end up finding is like out here in, in, in like even in South Carolina, you'll go and you'll find Del Monte farms with just loads and loads and loads, just, you know, hundreds of acres, thousands of acres of like dead corn because it's wow. subsidied and they get paid per, you know, per like uh, field or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they just bury it. And, you know, the one like they literally we bury hundreds of tons of milk, corn and something else, you know, all the time because it's a, it's a you know, their own subsidy. So if they create them, the, you know, the, the uh, they get paid no matter if they sell them or not. Yeah, my, uh, my, my country is so similar. stupid. My country is so stupid. <laughs> we had these. We had these. Uh, <laughs> we had these protesters. Yeah. And they were destroying all of our property. And we just gave them these thirteen shitty little colonies. Like, oh so. yeah. We know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh -huh. We're gonna move on. Uh, Leg Kick had a question before I lost my internet for the second time. He wanted to know how do you guys dictate your pacing in your stories? Hmm. Um. There has to be explosion every three pages. <laughs> all right, Michael. Bay. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> I just I kind of try to operate off of the form the classic structure of you know um, your first act second act third act uh, plot points and such mm -hmm. but I mean it's kind of it's kind of organic you know yeah so yeah. far my, mine's been like yes yeah, it's, it's kind of like the same recipe I'll do I'll do like the intro some pivotal scenes and then yeah when, when it comes time for a twist. But I try to make sure that yeah I have enough to play with in between those acts, so uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to tell an entertaining story, especially with what we're doing. You know, we don't have as many pages. That, you know, if we're doing a novel or something, it's totally different. But uh, you need to get your point across. You need it to be clear. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It just kind of pacing is one of those things. I feel as though people don't really notice it until it's wrong. Right. Then, yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Just, especially this happens a lot in a TV show where the editor or just someone has not hit it right. And you just find the, the characters all standing around doing nothing when mm. they should be really, uh, it's actually should be an intense situation. And uh, I think, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm with uh, Ben, uh, you know, start off with something. Um, that's worked in the past and then go from there and if it feels wrong there's probably something wrong with it but otherwise you know you're probably doing okay yeah. that's how i so I, look at it. I, I think if you oh go ahead Colin. i was gonna say i think that uh i write faster through the boring parts because i want to get past them <laughs> like uh, and that auto corrects like the tempo of the book <laughs> It's true, though. I think I think the scene uh, dictates the pacing. You know, uh, yeah. if you're if you're having like a a quiet, intense moment, you know, you don't want it to breeze through that. Like it doesn't matter. You want to give it the time mm -hmm. uh, that it deserves. But like an intense action scene, yeah, you want shit going all over the place. You want it to feel like it's moving fast. Yeah. So it it, it all depends on what you're writing at that time. What what are you trying to tell? What part of the story are you at? Exactly. And those action sequences, like, w w since I'm, I've been doing a little bit of both, um, yeah, I, I really try to pull the audience kind of um, into it. You know, like, I want them to be right there, like either side by side with what's going on or, you know, right in their face. Uh, yeah. and, and it usually really, it, it blows up those pages even more, especially if you're having like, you know, um, like those, those talking scenes or stuff that doesn't have a lot of action going on. But yeah. you know, yeah. Again, it's it's still things have to be entertaining. Like then it comes down to the artist part of it. So, um, I'm, I'm thinking of different angles that are going to make uh, whatever they're saying a little bit more dramatic, or have the the like the the proper composition that's going to you know lead your eye to the next panel and and you know throughout the page. Yeah, and in comics, yeah. like the page number, like uh, helps. Like uh, you know that you can you know. If I need to fit this entire beat in this one page because the next page has to be like the next step in it. Like right. so 
that came in handy with screenwriting because yeah. on page 20 you should be that at a first act you know and mm -hmm. or at least getting get in there right so if you're on page 30 you're you might be pushing you're on page 40 getting a little long in the tooth for the first act you know yeah. so that does help the the page numbers yeah yeah i think it's just all about the tension mm -hmm. i mean the whole yeah, thing yeah. is i mean you know when you're creating a, you know the, we're, we're all creating like comic books. And I mean, even if you're creating horror comic books, they're still kind of a hero. The hero wants something. There's something in their way. They have to get there. Okay. Well, what creates the tension? It's like, you know, there was an age old question that was asked to, uh, was a Hitchcock, right? It's like, how long would you have two people kiss each other? And he said 10 minutes, but it put a bomb under the chair. <laughs> you know? So if you think about that, what are, what are you saying? You're saying you, you have to, you can make anything tense. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, you create some, sem that's your, your pacing. What is, what are you doing? What are you trying yeah. to say? And then you say, you, you say that in, you know, in that way or, or in a way that uh, exhibits and manifests both conflict and tension, because that's what drives your story. You know, we don't learn from our successes. We learn from our failures. Well, so do your characters. So you have to have, you know, a, a lot of, you know, uh, they get it and then they fail and then they get it and then they fail and they get it and then they fail. And then you show like the, you know, their enemy or whatever it is, you know, advancing, you have to show that. And so you have that, that constant back and forth. And that's what keeps the audience immersed and interested in, in stories. That's all it is. So, I mean, how do you control pacing or what do you do to control pacing? You just continue to add tension. If it doesn't, you know, help the character, if it doesn't add to the plot or the character, get rid of it. That's, that's very good yeah. advice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Very true. And then that, that brings it back to the process of, uh, you know, editing. Uh, but go ahead, call me, Mark. Sorry, I was just going to add, uh, yeah. that's like I was saying earlier about how every, like, piece of dialogue needs to say something about the character and, like, move the plot forwards. Otherwise... If it's not doing that, like, why is it in there? Like, yeah, it's then it's just dead weight. Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, if you want to do something right, it's it's like uh, every time you have a character speak, well, they should be saying something important. Otherwise, you know, you don't really need it. Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. Mm. Well, and I, I think that that's actually something that a lot of people struggle with. Like, I've had a couple of people who've asked me to do, like, small amounts of editing for their projects, and, and they'll hand it to me, and I'm like, like you realize that this is a visual medium and you said a lot of shit that you didn't have to say that you also yeah. showed like you said a lot that you showed it's like it's like if you had the sentence twice like there's no right. point for both of them yeah it's redundant but yeah that, that, that's the thing that believe I, in... I, oh i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead man no i'm mean, gonna go I, I, yeah yeah I've, I've seen that kind of crap all the time especially in marvel you know, they'll waste page after page after page on nothing dialogue that's going fucking nowhere just because they want to be cheeky or, or kind of, oh, we they'll think this is interesting. waste book after book doing that. Oh, yeah. Like, it'll oh my be gosh. an entire book. They loves the science. Well, see, that actually plays <laughs> into what I was going to science. say. You have to, you have to actually believe that your audience is intelligent enough to pick up on what's in the artwork that goes along with the story. If you're holding them by the hand, then that mm -hmm. says that you don't respect the intelligence of your audience. Right. That means right. that you think that they're a bunch of children that don't understand what you're trying to tell them, and that's mm -hmm. fucking insulting. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I've been reading these things since I was three years old, and. They have steadily gotten worse. Like they were oh. great in the late eighties and the nineties. What? what? <laughs> I haven't yet, man. Could, couldn't get worse. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the mainstream. You know, like wait, we're not supposed we're not supposed to insult our audience. No, I think uh, that's why we're here. Now. What are you talking oh. about? If, if oh, damn it! Now I got to change the yeah. script. Well, that hey, lucent I'm guy, sorry. Jesus! I can't, he sorry, can't get sorry over to break himself. it to you. <laughs> now I gotta go back and change the entire script. <laughs> right. I, I derailed you. You were saying I've been reading these books since I was three years old, and they're progressively getting worse and worse. Yeah, um, late eighties, early nineties. There was a lot of good story, a lot of good artwork, and then we hit like the mid two thousands, and things just started to take a nosedive. And mm -hmm. then over the last like five, six years. Like, I have people come into the shop all the time, and they are picking up books just because they've been picking up books, these books, for years. They've got yeah. all of them. They're not reading them. They don't give a shit. 
You know, it's they're not paying attention. They're not excited. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no passion for this shit anymore. No, at that you point, know? it's just completionist. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Or they're buying it because, oh, this variant cover. Oh, so what? how's the story? I don't know. I'm not reading the story. I mean, like, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I buy comics just as much for the stories as I do for the art sometimes. Art. And there's when I went and hit up my, my comic book shop just recently and came back with that giant-ass haul of them. Um, yeah. I, I bought probably about six or seven covers because they had a hot redhead chick on the front. And I was like, I don't know what this shit's about, but she's hot. And I, I, I'm taking it. And then if it's good, maybe I'll go and get more. But if not, then whatever. I have a hot red chick on the cover. I tapped What's right it? into that market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> hot did. red chick. I got the hot white chick. <laughs> well, see, that's the difference. Chick. You pick it up and you'll read it, though. You know, something I, yeah, I will. Just for the cover because it's a rare cover. You know, yeah. speculator market. Yeah, you're talking about this. Yeah, the speculative industry or whatever that they kind of created the meta speculation, which came I from like. Fucking hate that shit. Well, I mean, I'm not going to get into all the economics of it. Yeah, but yeah I understand what you're On my next book. But uh, go ahead, Mark. Because <laughs> you <Sorry. laughs> On my next book, one of the tiers that I'm going to do is that you can just buy the cover. You know, the cover, the inside cover, the <laughs> inside cover, and the back cover. You can just yes. buy the cover. <laughs> yes. Love it. There we go. Just, just, to, just to appease the speculators. Buy yeah, three, yeah. please. <laughs> There's no comic inside, just the cover. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it. I had a real it's hard real cheap time. postage as well, that is. It doesn't weigh very much. <laughs> but I, I mean, what's come, you know what you think of the variants you can do? <laughs> variant after variant. Oh my God. Exactly. But what's funny is what's also come from is, is you have, okay, you have like the speculative uh, kind of signaling industry, and then you have the virtue signaling industry, which they <sighs> buy comics just because it fulfills some intersectional scorecard. No, they yeah. don't. They will. They will crow about it online, but these motherfuckers won't buy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like straight up, they won't. We don't have any money. Well, the industry keeps making them anyway. These these, these are know. people who buy hamburgers so they can get a sex change. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is a really important part um, that Blue Samurai just put up. Writing for kids. This is something that bothers me. When people write for kids, and they write down to children. Um, the mm -hmm. dumb thing about that is you're trying to give kids something to reach for so they can yep. grow and learn and you know you don't learn if all I'm ever doing is talking to a, an eight year old like they're five uh, yep. that, that's just keeping them like a child audience? oh god right. yeah. don't get yeah. oh god don't no, get that's, me on that's that. not. But that's, that's <laughs> we're not going down talking. all of these rabbit holes that we could but this have is, you actually this looked a, at her twitter <laughs> She asked no, the most like inane questions I have ever seen in my life. Yep. <laughs> What's your inane, favorite color? That's... No, it's like, what if I turned around and my husband was Optimus Prime? Fuck yeah. Oh, how <laughs> how funny, random, LOL. For yeah. me, it's the clapping. <laughs> it's called being kitschy, okay? You just don't understand her. She's very... Hey. The way she claps, that's just... You know, she You're clapping? What is that, like flamenco or something? I mean, you, you know a woman in, in like her 50s who's way overweight and shouldn't be in comics. She has her finger on the pulse. Don't you know that? She does, right? <laughs> her her and Kelly Sue, Kelly, Kelly Sue DeConnick? You know, Jeez. Kelly Sue DeConnick makes me sad because some of her early stuff was really well written. And then it's like she just kind of went off the rails on third wave feminism, and we yeah, lost she's actually a good, a good writer. writer. She is, and I really enjoy writer. Matt Fraction stuff too. And I feel like she kind of keeps him in the closet, beaten, like <laughs> like because nobody ever sees Matt anywhere. Now it could be that he just doesn't like to get on camera. Wait, but wait, wait. I are you like, saying there's an opposite grooming here? She, I listen. I have no idea. But <laughs> are you saying just, that? Are you saying start, that we're starting that? Not, she did, right here. <laughs> she did not take the oath. The pledge. <laughs> well, well, the no, pledge no, actually says that you can't do anything to women or POCs. You can do anything oh, to men you want. <laughs> I forgot about that clause. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's very specific verbiage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you're a dude, you can be beaten, put away wet, shoved in a closet, put in a gimp suit, <sighs> and thrown into the box. Doesn't matter. I didn't know Preston was on the panel. 
He's not. <laughs> hey, we got another question. Unhinged. If you were a tree, what tree would you be? He always has that. <laughs> he does. But see, it's perfect when y'all start going down another rabbit hole that we ain't getting into. So, everyone, real quick, what tree would you be? The mighty oak. The mighty oak. Damn it, Vinny. <laughs> a, Christmas tree. a Christmas tree. I bear gifts. Aw, thank you. Nice. Mm. Well, well, I'm an Australian, so I have to say a gum tree. <laughs> I like it. All right. Well, I guess I'll say a cypress. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna. Uh, I'll be a dogwood, I guess. <laughs> Dog. Redwood. Redwood. Well, hi. Uh, a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one tree that like naked tree. females rub up against, I don't know. He's like Emily Blinded. He's gonna be in the giving. Is that something okay? that naked females do? <laughs> At Woodstock, yeah. Mark, uh, 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 what's the question? Favorite tree? <laughs> what tree <laughs> would you be if you were a tree? <laughs> Plus, you guys all took all the good names, so I was like, you know, you took redwood, you took Christmas tree. Fuck y'all! You didn't leave me. <laughs> No one took maple. Okay, fine. Fuck it. Maple tree. Maple there you go. Tree. Get out of here, you Canuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, that syrup's good. Hey. <laughs> just lick yourself. I I don't don't know. Know. Wow. Let, me, let, me, let me turn off my camera. No. Oh. Uh, Come on. So, Shay, what kind of tree would you be? Uh, I was going to say an evergreen, but now I just feel like I'd be a dead one. <laughs> Damn, oh, Jesus. No one picks of you. bonsai either. Dark. I'm a dead tree. Coffee table. Do you have like a... Oh, you know, coffee table. So you you know, know, a as, as we can tell, Shay's in a delightful mood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, oh, who cares? We're all going to be dead in a few years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like the flowers, they're just gonna stumped. bloom and then die. I don't want them in my house. Give me a seed, you bastards. Oh, petrified. <laughs> petrified, how's that? Petrified, thank you. A petrified tree, that's much better, Frank. Is that really a tree anymore? It's just a rock. Yeah. Essentially, it's, it's a tree shaped rock. It's a tree. It's immortal. It's immortal. Like a tree. Right. It'd That'd be, be a palm tree. Wall. There you go. Tall, that overly sucks. flamboyant, and always so You could be a coconut tree. There you go. <laughs> wow! Innuendos is galore. I'm a wank. I'll be a palm tree. All right. Uh, we have obviously just totally lost the plot at this point. Their own process right yeah, out the window. Uh, That's my good time. <laughs> <laughs> Smiling Bandito, yes, I do have a lot to live for, like Character Crux, which is going to be Tuesdays at 6, the first episode. Is okay, what be. is Character Crux? Character Crux is basically a and d esque show, but with CG characters. So all a bunch of CG characters are being ported in to a world to go through a campaign that is being uh, DM'd by Chaotic Neutral Comics. And... Uh, First episode is going to be on Smiling Bandito show. Second episode will be here on Red Valkyrie. Uh, third is Chaotic, and then we'll figure it out after that. Um, oh, okay, that's cool. I was going to do hmm. something like that. I was going to do something. It's just going to be called. I think it's Ready to Play, which we were going to do a preview of someone's book, mm -hmm. but we were going to create a game for their book. Like I was going to, we were, I was going to read it, cool. find some characters, assign right. you know basic abilities, and then we were going to play like a game through their book and and talk about their book while we did it. Oh, very uh, cool. Very, very cool. I mean, I'm coming onto your channel, Shay, to do it. Because I think I'm second. Oh, then maybe third. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they've got it figured out. They, they, okay. look. We're, we know the first one. We've got that right. down. We'll figure out the second, third, and etc. Are you guys trying to be like the anti critical role? We could use that. <laughs> yeah, just trying trying to bring some fun to it and uh, and talk right. about some really cool books. So Mike's going to be on it with me, which is going to be awesome. Um, we got a bunch. We actually have a bunch of people. So Carla, uh, who else do we got? We got Joe. For a whole uh, bunch of wonderful. nerds, a whole bunch of D and D nerds. Yes, Phil. <laughs> in a while. You've What's wrong never with D &D nerds. I've hey, I've played D and D. <laughs> Oh, we I all miss have. my D and D crew. <laughs> was like, we all have. <laughs> we all have, and they're the yeah. ones that convinced me 
I don't really like. Oh anime. shit! I'm first. You're the first guest <laughs> that we're having. It's on Bandito's channel, though. Oh. We'll When's talk offline because I'm so confused on everything. What? We'll get it sorted before Tuesday, folks. <laughs> what is the first guess? What is everything? It? So we're we're rotating through guests for campaigns. Um, oh, okay. So we'll we'll have a couple of campaigns. We'll have a guest on to talk about their book. And, oh, okay. Yeah. I was talking okay. about your D and D on your Red Valkyrie. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Is she doing D and D now? Like, what? I mean, it will eventually. So you're doing live D and D campaigns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, well. and I, I will be in cosplay, and I'm cosplaying Absolute Valkyrie because I don't have a character, so <laughs> I'm cosplaying this. Cool. On uh, one of I want to see the Bardiche. What were you saying, Mark? Yeah, on one of the CG UK shows, like we do, like a, a live role playing thing sometimes, uh, and it was when uh, Rocket Gal and the Moment of Mars was launching. Mm -hmm. We did one uh, like set in that universe, and it like so. I wrote like the jazz version of a story like in Gilmore's universe, and then like we all acted it out. And he was playing Rocket Girl. It was really funny. <laughs> like, uh, I was trying to get a cheeky uh, sequel out of him, and it like there you go. I just wrote you a sequel. Like, <laughs> 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 nice. like, here you go. All right. Well, uh, I do. I do think that uh, we are we are pretty spent. We're almost at three hours. Good shit. Why these just keep oh, getting wow. longer and longer? Um, but I wanted to thank yeah, everyone. That goes. Right. I wanted to the thank Bra everyone Brady for coming out, for hanging out with us in the chat. <laughs> uh, you guys are all amazing. I'm ignoring whatever Will just said. And we'll go around the room. Everyone have your last little minute of plugs. So, Buddy Lord, go ahead. Yo, what's up? I am at the Buddy Lord on Twitter. My book is Sins of the Fae. Nikki and her family clash against ancient gods to hold off the apocalypse. Her kids are deemed Sins of the Fae by Cthulhu S dreaming gods that want them dead. And Nikki says, no way, bring it on. So that's on Indiegogo. Go check it out if you like epic fantasy adventure, uh, Game of Thrones meets Saga. Come and get it. Awesome. Nice. All right, Ben. So, yeah, you can find me on YouTube under the name Fusebox, just like it says on my little avatar, usually. I don't know where the name went. Oh, there it is. Um, and, yeah, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I, I can't say it on, on here because it's just too weird. Um, but uh, the most important thing, check out Outlaw Nights on Indiegogo. If you like space pirates, if you like sexy people, if you like nonstop action, if you like really good three-dimensional characters that don't preach at you, uh, this is the book for you. Heck yeah. Mark. <laughs> um, I've got to go to work in a minute. Uh, so just follow me on... Uh, uh, YouTube subscriptions are the most valuable thing that you can give me at the moment. Like, um, I need them. So give me them, please, people. I <laughs> <laughs> see through please in there. That's, that's oh, good, that's man. Great. Uh, Frankie, that's, that's all you got, Mark, that you're done? <laughs> in 2022, I'm releasing The Pigeon with Will. And... <laughs> <laughs> Two years, guys. Yes, I got my copy the other day. The book is gorgeous, you guys. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. man. Awesome. Definitely go back it. Uh, Thanks, Luke. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and uh, YouTube and Instagram. I'm at Death Metal Hero. Uh, I seem to have a proclivity for doing four-hour live streams where I sing directly into a camera and a microphone and bellow in my garage. Uh, so uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications so you get those. Uh, I'm working on several projects, uh, one of which is the story that uh, Shay mentioned earlier. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's on its way. Heck yeah. Dude. Mike. G'day. I thought you got a lot of, you got a lot of accents on here, so I'll just be uh, the Aussie. 
for a wall. Now, are you I'm pushing your accent and, uh, just a little bit more now? I can go, I, mate, I can go even further if you want me to. I can go all the way to the end. I don't know what happens past there, but uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Keep it up because I want to pick up on your accent. I want to be able to copy it because I love listening. Sounds to like he's from Perth. <laughs> yeah, over in Perth, mate. Go, go, uh, subscribe to uh, Michael Bancroft on YouTube. <laughs> You've got a good show, are you? Uh, he, st he streams regularly, almost every day, pretty much. Takes takes off Sunday, of course, but uh, yeah. And uh, back to Lucent. It's still in in demand. Yes, got the Lucent. Excellent. Too. Good. That well, means I haven't missed it yet. Um, I'm working on some some bullshit, and you know, just go back <laughs> bullshit. Um, bullshit. You know, my name is uh, bullshit at Twitter. Um, <laughs> even bigger bullshit at Facebook. Wow. But if you want to get past mm -hmm. that, it's black flag. Pretty good. It's going to be pretty good, I think. Um, yeah. And if, if anything, because Dan Frag is drawing it and. You know, his goodness just sort of splats on me in the most least sexual way possible. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. I like how he caught access. that inference, you know, mid <laughs> gesture. You have access to so many other words you could have used. I know. Make sure you wipe that off quickly. <laughs> if I don't like, just just think discuss after one of you during one of these streams, I don't think I've done my job. I guess we're just glad you clean up before you get on, you know, the, the stream with us. Oh, you assume you just put so, the shirt on so you can't see it. Guys, I'm so full of love. Right. I can't help but get any of it on you. You're going to work a lot harder to disgust me, man. Cool. Wow. <laughs> well, I got to write some shit down then. Um, <sighs> so back to shit, which is pineapple perception. You will enjoy it. It is great. It is a orgasmic experience in the making. And yes, ass, I'm, ass getting, titty. I'm getting very sexual tonight, so I'll pass it on over to Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we got the Bunny King in the house now. Yeah, go back to City of Venus, uh, through the woods, City of Venus. Um, yeah, we, we got a few different uh, books you could pick up on um, on the City of Venus campaign. I have two art books on there. We have the, the main book itself. And uh, towards the end of this month, beginning of next month, I'm going to be putting up the, uh, the kids book as well on there. Um, we're going to count up what we have left and, uh, yeah, first come first serve. Uh, nice. yeah. Just to yeah, get people yeah. That's Instagram, the Halloween right? one, right? Yeah. That's the Halloween yeah. one. Yeah. Nice. So that should be good. And yeah, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I finally crossed the 600 subscriber mark. Um, so that's yeah, cool. yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Oh, thank you. Uh, Tuesday, I'm going to have Charlie's London on and we're going to be talking about the, uh, Charlie Chaplin project that, uh, I have a cover on. Nice. Um, and okay. go go back Sunsworn as well. I did a cover for that project, and there's some original artwork you can still pick up there as well. So uh, yeah, do that for Red Gaze. He's an awesome guy. Um, yeah, he is. Yeah. So um, thank you, Shay. Thank you, everybody here. Absolutely. You guys all rock. Absolutely. Hey, Fred, got to hold so up much. that book again, like Kilroy, and have your nose sticking over it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much on the on the panel for being here it's always a pleasure i love having you guys around uh thank you everyone in the chat you guys are amazing uh and you put up with us when we go horribly off the rails which is frequent uh, especially if shay has had a drink or two um, it's the best part have you i am actually sliding? sober right now i haven't completely. seen you drinking I, I'm sober too. It's just uh, for whatever reason, this moonshine is not very strong. Oh, okay. Forgot you got moonshine. Yeah, is moonshine it? Pepsi because that's how I roll. You trying to go blind, lady? Jesus. It's delicious. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I mean, if it's not affecting you, is it really moonshine? I don't know. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's just a really sad batch. Um, <laughs> anyway, please make sure that you sub to Red Valkyrie if you haven't already. We are getting very, very close to 1,000 uh, subs, and I've got a really awesome uh, kind of gift in store for when that happens. We're going to do a really cool stream. Uh, give away some cool shit from some cool people. So definitely uh, share us out with your friends. Make sure that you're subbed. Let's see if we can get to 1,000 in the next uh, next couple of weeks, months, yes. whatever, so I can actually do something awesome. Um, but yeah, thank you guys all so much for coming out. You guys are amazing, and uh, we will catch you all next time. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Good night. Bye. See you all later.
Hats off. You die. Woo!